Now, I'm going to say something yeah. that, yeah. as always, Andy, the Twitter version of it, right, is going to, it doesn't represent the whole argument. You mean right? it's missing context? Or it, well, you know how it is. Like, you boil something down to 140, 280 characters, you don't get the 240 full. 240 right? 280, 140 or 280. Now it's 280. Well, now it's a million. Doesn't now matter. it's a million, this is, yeah. this is why. This isn't part of it, Andy. All right? Okay. So, like, I just, I'm going to say it, and then we'll unpack it. All right, it, but I right. think we'll all agree. Don't you think it's ridiculous? You can't pay somebody to jerk you off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now again, <Okay. laughs> let's start unpacking it. Okay. I'm not saying I want it or I need it or anything sure. like yeah. that. We were just driving home from Napa yesterday. Mm-hmm. You Jen, saw the jerk off station. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> Jen, why aren't these everywhere? <laughs> Jen's driving the car. I'm sitting there holding coal. Ben's asleep in the back. Look, I'm at, just, look I'm, at jerk off city. Everybody's I'm just so look, I'm confident. just looking out the window, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, you know what's really crazy? And this is all in my head, by the way. I did yeah. not uh, say any of this to Jen. I think I might have been trying to sleep, and this is how I, I podcast when I sleep. Yeah, me too. I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, Jen got a massage, right? Mm-hmm. And that's an intimate thing. Very Someone intimate. else touching you, someone else doing Everywhere. it. Everywhere. And sometimes that, they touch real, they go real low on the butt, and you're like, this seems like it should be not right. Sometimes there's happy endings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not sure. not a Jen's massage. The she, we went to a reputable place, but you understand. You've heard yeah. this before. Sure. I didn't have a happy ending. In fact, the lady was like, hey, you need to tip actually 20%. And I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, that's what we do. You just tip 20%. And I'm Where like, was this? Are you at, a, at a place, yeah, like a place nearby my apartment. Like, or the. You should have been there. like, well, now I'm tipping 10. Now it's going well, down. I, I, like, I just rounded up. It was six. It was 63 bucks, and I rounded up to 70. And uh-huh. I was like, yeah. Sure, why not? Here's seven dollars, and she was like, "Oh, actually, twenty uh, percent." But it's where you write it in, right? Um, wait, what do you mean? No, no. It's just like apparently a thing that you're supposed to know that I didn't yes. know. Well, twenty percent is yeah, generally tipping culture, but it's not promised. It's anymore. like when I watch a uh, Kirby enthusiasm, they're always like, "There's that episode about tipping yeah. the people in the hotel rooms." Yeah, I'm like, yeah. "Wow, I would have never known that had it not been for this episode." Yeah, that's well, that's we, not a real thing though. Oh, okay. the tipping the hotel people. Really? It, it can be. It can't. I mean, you can be. We went to a nice. Like we went to a nice resort this weekend. In it's just Nick yeah. being because being like, our, nah. our neighbors <laughs> couldn't go, and they were like, "It's a sunk cost." So somebody's got to take it. You guys want it? We're like, we'd never be able to afford this on our own. So sure. Oh, that's fine. And we went there, and when we had the little pamphlet, they gave all the information. They had little envelopes in there of like for the concierge, for the housekeeper, and I was like, "Oh, that's funny." And I put it back in. Hmm, like, I'm not, hand job. I wish I. Could. <laughs> we're getting back. To, we're getting back. <laughs> no, to I mean, hand that's job. a whole other separate topic. Yeah. That's a really big hot topic right now. Of like tipping culture has gone nuts in California. Okay. Because all of these employers are like you know like every machine you walk up to is yeah now, they yeah, always have yeah, to do this yeah, thing yeah. where they pretend like they don't know what the quote information on the screen is going to be it's just gonna ask you a couple questions there and they look away yeah they're trying to be polite you can say As, no yeah. can you yeah can you say no i, can you I mean well, no? i've done custom and then they spit in your coffee it's the thing where i've done back. custom well see i just get black coffee so they hand it to me right there if Jen's stuff's getting spit in, I, on her. Why are you momentary... ordering a matcha latte, strawberry, whatever? Yeah. Macho man. You know what I mean? I got time for this. <laughs> <laughs> the macho man. Ooh, brother. <laughs> um, Hands up. I'm not one for, I, okay, I guess maybe I'm old school, but I'm, I tip like valets. I tip anyone that's at in the concierge area that's helped me out with stuff, bags, stuff like that. Sometimes I guess yeah. At the end of a longer hotel stay, I will leave money for like the cleaning. The most person, for your for most part, part at a, just a, a W two yeah. night stay or whatever. Yeah, yeah you're not no, you're not doing that, and that's right? fine. Whatever yeah, you do, whatever you want to do. But like, but but every but tipping everyone, I I, I kind of added up the other day. I was like, man, I tip probably like on average because I go to Starbucks at least three times a day. Yeah, and I love the Starbucks employees. I have to tip them. Yeah, so it's always a buck. I'm adding a dollar. I'm adding a cup of coffee a, extra to my day basically yeah. by tipping people. Yeah, I don't know. I hear you. I get there, especially with the t- the taps, because the taps do make it so convenient. Yeah, well, it's not oh, even real 20% money. Twenty like, percent or whatever. Yeah, whatever. yeah. Well, it's like oh, twenty percent. Like, oh, but see, then I. But then it's then it's. But then I'm then tipping it, things I never would do on a tip. If I'm at a bar, like in the old days, you and me out there rocking it, I buy the I buy the beer, I give the guy a buck. Guy extra. Give him a buck. That's it. Yeah, it's yeah. It. And I get, but now you like round that up and like you. You're start, buying an eight dollar beer, you're giving him a buck. You're buying a fifteen dollar cocktail, you're giving him a buck, right? The dollar is the hey, you you spent five minutes making this thing for me. Here's a buck, right? But the coffee is four dollars. It's a buck. Do you see how inflation started to, to sink sure. in here? Right, everything you're getting less. You're spending more. You're getting less. That's that's the annoying thing. But the really annoying thing is the Seinfeld conundrum, right? Which is that when I tap with the dollar thing, I don't think they see it. I got to go no, and then when I go no, I have to go, make a big show out of going into my pocket. Get the money. Look at Andy. I'm not even kidding. I carry one dollar bills with me, just so that people can see me tipping them. Wow. 
Not because I want them to get the money. I know that. Like, I it's I know because that. I want them to know that I'm the one that tipped them. It's completely selfish. Well, and I want to take complete credit for tipping them. I mean, you're, you're here. It is. You're bringing up that moment that I had at um, GDC, I believe. That's the thing. Yeah, we were uh, at yeah. the mix. That's GDC. Yeah, and I, I brought this up like a long time ago, but I was doing what Nick was doing. I, I wanted to show. Hey, check yeah. it out. Yeah. Tipping you. I'm doing the tip right here. Only had a twenty dollar bill. Oop. That's I tough. Put it in there. Wow. Because <laughs> oh, I was just, just so totally committed, huh? I was so embarrassed. Like I, I like you start digging for change. I I was so. But the thing is, I I covered it up because I didn't want him to know that it was a twenty. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is weird. That's weird. Yeah. Because I like then you would have just drank because I, because I'm doing like the. I'm thinking that you're thinking about the, like I do that like that extra levels of like what are you thinking about what I'm thinking right now? Yeah. So I don't want to pull out a twenty and him see the twenty and be like, whoa, this dude's definitely not doing this on purpose. Like Got so it. like I, I'm just like, all right, he probably knows that I'm like embarrassed by this. So I'm just gonna hide and put the twenty in there. And like, did I need the twenty? Absolutely yeah, I did. It's twenty dollars. Like, am I That's rich enough to be doing that? No. But I was just so embarrassed. I didn't know what to do in the moment. I panicked. Sure. See, next time it happens, you go, hey, man, do you have change for a 20? And then make a big show of taking it. I have so many Put a little $5 in there. A five. Oh, okay. okay. See, I did that at the Giant Bomb E3 uh, cocktail spot where the guy was working. I gave him, I, as soon as I got there, I got a beer and I gave him a five. Whenever there's an open bar, it's like, I wish you had a little tip tap that I could tip tap for just a dollar. No. But yeah. I, don't, I don't carry cash on me regularly. So when yeah. there's an open bar, I would love to... You know, you all aren't getting any extra tips here. You're getting paid for it, obviously, right. but how, wh- what's the... Well, that's, great. that's a great question, because I do a lot of comedy shows. They give you drink tokens as part of, as part of your payment. Um, they also don't pay you, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you'll get the drink tokens. Nice hobby. And one of the places that I've been going up a lot at is the Palace Theater, which is over in North Beach. Really beautiful. The show's called The Setup Speakeasy. It's really, really cool. And they got great cocktails. But I, I don't drink that much anymore. So when I do drink, I have 15 tokens that are just in my pocket. And I'm like, well, I got to tip big, right? Because these are like $10 to $14 drinks wherever you're going at the thing. Yeah. I give them the token. I, do I give them a buck? They give me the drink? That's a five dollar. That's five bucks at least, right? Minimum. My friend Alan, who delivers weed for a living, took out like, he did the the, the, the gangster shit. Yeah, he's got took like it out. thing it was, like, on 20, a money 20, clip. 20, yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just slid him like two twenties. No, you like, got to... Well, I'm here every day. <laughs> I What's can't be spending forty dollars a day on drinks. You got to understand, Nick, that this is at this point. It's the circle of life. It's the ocean floor, kind of working in tandem with each other. Yeah, you got to know. With the ocean floor, should working I, in tandem with who? With each other, like the coral is feeding. Oh, the okay. Little so the things that live on the ocean floor, shitting on top of eels okay. and stuff sure, like sure, that. Sure, right. Would you like? You got to understand in that moment, Nick. I am working tonight. I'm going up on stage. Yeah. The I, reason, I work for the... Venue. The reason this person is getting tips at all is because I am bringing people here. They're, they're capitalizing off of my art. Yes. So why would you give... Why would you tip if you are performing, you know? That's a great question. But there is that level of, like, camaraderie where you want to support them because they're doing... You they're really put the emphasis on come too. there. <laughs> With that? You really put the emphasis on come there. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> camaraderie. Camaraderie. I don't know. I just... I mean, I also... I, I'm also a sucker for tipping. Like, I'm, I'm all fucking talk. I tip every single... My, it drives deep. You know people nuts. are... Yeah, they're I, well, because I used to work in service. So I was like, uh, you know, a couple extra bucks at the end of the day when you're... When you're just starting out, you're you know you're working minimum wage. It goes a long way. Yeah. But but it, but it is everywhere. It is like, did you buy a two dollar ice cream? There's a little information on the screen right there. I'll just uh, and they look they fuck the it's the look away that bothers me. Yeah. It's the I know you don't want to do this, but my 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 hubris. No, my, but they're trying. My is they're looking evil. away because they know they it's an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. Right. But you're putting me. Constantly. Would you rather them just stare at you and say nothing while you look at this? I would street? rather. Like, you know how many fucking people walk away without ever hitting anything? Like, oh, sir, you got to choose a thing, right? Sir. But I'd rather the tip option just not. I don't want to be. I don't want to be put in this awkward situation to begin with. I now have anxiety every time I buy anything because I look over, I see that little little card device, and I'm like, I know it's going to say, "Do you want to give it a tip?" And the tips start at like twenty percent. They're not. It's not like, hey, here's f-, like you're buying a two dollar ice cream or Custom, a three dollar ice cream with salt and straw, and it's like. Start he's me really, it's the ice cream that he's mad about. <laughs> the ice cream's come up multiple is, times is, now for this. What, uh, what, what scoop do you want? 
No, actually, I should take it back because ice cream is always. I'm the most annoying person. Like, Did you get a little banana scoop. Can I taste scoop? the rum raisin? I give it a little scoop. Can I taste the oh, gold metal ribbon? Guy. Give it a little you. scoop. No, I, come on, you get three fuck ta- you. You get three tastes. With you're ice not cream. supposed to do yeah, it though. That's like are. saying like, oh, we're your we're chair reclines in an airplane. No, you're not supposed to fucking do it. What? But you do don't do what on a long plane. Yeah, yeah you don't take a shit on not nah. No, re- <laughs> the seat reclining. I think they don't think you sit on an airplane. I was like, bit, yeah. <laughs> you shit your pants is what you do. Yeah, you compacted it. Yeah. You uh, on a long flight, you recline the seat. Oh, if you go down to LA and you recline. No, you, yeah, you're, 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 fu- you're on my shit list forever. Yeah, you're, I'll put a you on the fucking Come Steve Buscemi yeah. kill list. Well, Come Kevin, on. you sleep on any couch possible, right? Like, I would. Uh, yeah. Kevin's probably laying out right now. We can't see. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, I often just like I don't recline when I'm falling asleep. We get off the airplane and Kevin's sitting in the pilot's lap, like just <laughs> 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 taking a nap. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like it, there's certain. I'm like I don't mind giving people a little extra, but like don't start me at twenty percent. Don't have don't the options right now in San Francisco are twenty percent, twenty five percent, like thirty percent. I'm like, you, I'm gonna spend at a certain point. It's going to be half more, fifty percent of whatever the hell you're buying. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to tip. Or else you get just, the weird side. Or, ma- you know, be a fucking man, Nick, and either say no tip or $1 or whatever you want to tip. Oh, that's I'll do that. I'll sit there and I'll pick it out. But that is one, why zero, I, zero. That is why I carry the ones with me. Because you can't argue with one. You know what I mean? But I mean, I'm just telling you, you can hit the button. And, you know, we're beside the point. But then I'm like. Where did we draw the line in the sand that rubbing somebody for a massage is fine, but mm-hmm. giving the old rubbing tug mm-hmm. is a problem? Can, you know I, I mean? can, can we get to that in a little bit? Because yeah. I had one more thing I wanted to bring up. Um. And it was regarding the free samples that Kevin was doing. Sure. Because I'm not a big fan of these people, Kevin. If you're in front of me and there's a long line at the ice cream place. Yeah. And you're getting every damn sample you can possibly get your fucking little mouth on. Seasonal flavors, Andy? Yes, I'd like to try each and every one of them right now. And it goes... Give me water. Can I spit this (laughs) out? Is there a spit fucking? Let me me cleanse my palate. If I may. If I may. Often... The, the, like, experimental flavor that I try, I go with. Last time I went to get ice cream with Cool Greg, the experimental flavor was some, like, crazy, chunky monkey, like, homemade brew they had there. Are you and calling it experimental flavor because this is what the place calls it? Or are you saying, like, the one that you demo? He's saying something off the, off the beaten path. Gotcha. Not okay. a chocolate, a not flavor. a strawberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They the, have. The, the gotcha. Okay. Seasonal. I, I don't seasonal. know why I thought you were the saying the, like. seasonal chunky monkey. The I mean, people that are working there are like, hey, by the way, we've been, have it we've been working on this stuff. <laughs> Greg, that was just to get you to understand that this thing had chocolate, banana, walnuts in it. Oh, yeah. And, and what like, it was season, one of the three that I tried. And guess what? Banana season. <laughs> Instead of the, the the normal one that I get, yeah. I pivoted. I went another. And I, I'm and always disappointed. If I pivot to like some blueberry crumble, whatever Betty Crocker strawberry, it's I'm never. Yeah, I'm, I should have done with it. I should have just gotten something normal. What would have been the What would have been the go to? What I do now is I, I there's a place near me that does a whole bunch. Of, they do an Oreo shake. And I'll do the That's Oreo it, milkshake. Right, right. You can't go wrong with that. You're not gonna go wrong with that. No. L- re- recently, I got every time I have that. Mil- sorry, no, go ahead. Every time I have that milkshake, and then we, we do um, this strawberry milkshake from another drive-in place. Every time I have that, I think about tweeting. Kevin was right about milkshakes, but then I forget, or Ben distracts me, or whatever. But Kevin, I want you to know I believe it. You can schedule one. Random. Not a bad idea. Random Friday, just a random. <laughs> it's a, it's an evergreen Why tweet. Why can't you schedule a tweet from a phone, by the way? Can't you? I don't even know. Anyway, the recently I got a banana ice cream. Why? Like, put some toffee in there. Oh. Put some toffee bits banana in Banana toffee. The banana ice cream. Delicious. I never, we've talked about this multiple times, but I feel obligated to say it again. I, I never default to banana, period. I mean, you, you put, I you, don't usually you either. You put a plethora of fruits in front of me, and the banana could look the best. I still wouldn't eat the banana. It's just, well, look, here's the thing. It's just. Orange? <laughs> but, you know, yeah. as you know, I love a banana Laffy Taffy. I love a I love banana quick road oatmeal. I generally like that, that sort of banana flavored thing. Sure. And there was an ice cream at a place locally called Banana Nafi. And it was banana with toffee, toffee. and all sorts of other cool, fun stuff. And I was like, that sounds freaking delicious right yeah. now. Yeah, it does sound And good. it sure as hell was. Yeah. It was sweet as hell. Did I, should I, of course, maybe taken some lactate? A little lactate. Yeah. Throw some lactate in there, ma'am. Do you, do you have that? Chop that and put that on the cold. Yeah, room. do you have that up with your toppings as well? A little lactate. <laughs> that would probably be the most popular topping at an ice cream shop. <laughs> My biggest deal with ice cream shops is that they do not respect the sherbet and the sorbet enough. Nobody does. Sorbet is a different fucking sorbet. 
but you never know if you don't try. Get up. They, they do. Like uh, Mitchell's has several sorbet options. I've never ever once in my entire life of going there seen someone take someone. Get up. It. Go to the local Seven Eleven. Get yourself a slushy. Okay. That's your Slurpee. That's your fucking. No, it's not. It's that's just... your goddamn sorbet option. No, that's not. That's not what if I it want. Can't turn my stomach. <laughs> And make me clinch up and have to run to the bathroom real quick, then it's not really an ice cream. But there, like, there's times that I walk into an ice cream shop, yeah. and I'm like, do I want the sort of dairy desserty type thing mm-hmm. with, like, a sort of, I mean, a cream, right? Like, you like, it's a. Yeah, do I want ice an cream. ice cream with a chocolatey yeah. thing right. and no. a whatever the, or do I want like a really really cold kind of orange tasting thing or dragon fruit? Because there's a dragon fruit sorbet that I had the other day that was. Delectable. Is that a word? Yeah. Delectable? Oh, yeah. That's great. great. You're doing good one. Good for me. Word. It was delightful. It was delectable. And I just wish that not every place I went to only had one of those options. Sorbet? Throw them away. Whoa! Sherbert. And you can p- take your pick. I don't know what the difference is, to be honest. Sherbert either peaked with the Flintstone push-up or with <laughs> cock rock. Push-up. Wow, well, the push-up pop? Yeah. Yeah, it really did. Sherbert's still like a, it's like an orange flavored ice cream, right? No, but like there's rainbow sherbet. Yeah, I think, but, that, but that's still cream based, right? No, but it's, it's sorbet. It's, I think like, it's dairy free. Is it? I'm pretty sorbet sure sorbet is for sure dairy free. Kevin, can we get some research on what the difference? The difference oh, here we go. The difference between sorbet and sherbet. Sherbet and sorbet are both fruity frozen treats whose names are often incorrectly used interchangeably. The main difference. Oh, it's sherbet sh- contains sherbet, dairy while sherbet. No, I'm saying right. Sherbert. Sherbert. Uh, Sherbert contains dairy while sorbet has no dairy. Yeah, so Sherbert's Oh, cream. shit, I was wrong. Yeah. And then there it is. Sher- so no wonder I still shit. After. Yeah. <laughs> Sherbert, <laughs> not Sherbert. I've been defaulting to Sherbert this whole time thinking that it was dairy-free. Uh, no, wow. There you go. <laughs> Learn no something today. Right, no. Now, to go back to your original question. Yeah. I think that... Because, again, I'm not... not only don't get me wrong. I, I don't think in the current climate. You know what I mean? Like, here's what I'm saying. Where did this line get drawn? Because I'm not prepared to cross it. I'm not prepared to open Greg's jerk off stand. You know what I mean? Like I understand where we're at. All right. And I wouldn't be ready to go to Greg's Greg's jerk off stand. (laughs) But I'm just saying it's an interesting thing that you can be like, oh, you carry a lot of tension in your shoulders, right? When a lot of people are carrying tension in their balls. You know what I mean? And so why not just let them get it? Because it was you know see one of those charts of like 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 a Thai massage chart where it has all the nerves, all the tension goes to your balls (laughs) and it all comes around the ball. (laughs) You know what I mean? I, well, I mean, so you could do it in Vegas. The outside of Vegas. Yeah, oh, wait. Like I the thought Bunny it was, Ranch. The bunny weirdly ranch. enough. Oh, yeah. you mean just Nevada to- in total? No, it, Vegas, it's my understanding because um, I used to watch the, the Bunny Ranch. I remember yeah, yeah, where, yeah, where is it? Carson Texas City. Is or, it's like it's county or, thing. So the whatever oh. whatever county Las Vegas the city is, you can't. It's prostitution is actually not legal. If oh, you go outside of that state. county, in there are parts of Nevada where you actually like sex work is legal. Oh, um, okay. and so that's why they were able to film that show, and that's why the, the Moonlight Midnight Moonlight Buddy Ranch Moonlight Buddy Ranch. Yeah, um, I think still exists. That is the best. Yeah, they're still off. popping off. They're they're very. Popular. A lot of people are popping off there. Yeah, I think <laughs> that was good. I think not only should it all be legal, but I think it would solve conservatively. 90% of the world's problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, think about it, right? <laughs> You're frustrated. You're thinking about doing a road rage episode or something like that. Yeah. I got a road rage on something. You Talk look over and you see Greg's jerk off stand. <laughs> and you go, fuck it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that instead. <laughs> Just think about all the pent up frustration that like people walk around with. Anyone, right? Yeah. You think about it all. And you think to yourself, well, I have no outlet for this other than like, you know, basic shit like fucking working out or yoga. And it's like, wait, wait, wait what are you going to do? Sit. I'm pissed off. I'm a little horny. I'm going to schedule a yoga class, wait uh, six hours, and then go do that. It's horrible in there. No. It's hot and stuff. Yeah. Me- no, meanwhile, no. Greg's jerk off stand has air conditioning. One of those little fans that kind of yeah. blows the hot air. It around. has the mist. <laughs> yeah. It's got no, the it's mist. nice. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Greg's jerk off stand is like nice. you're about to buy some churros at Disneyland. It's yeah. got the mist, like with the fan. Yeah. Kind of yeah, 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 yeah. And so, so it's an outdoors little establishment. Well, it's indoor um, outdoor. So you go like you go it's in. Breezy. It's like it's like Victor's patio. You go, yeah. you order inside, but then you go outside. You're like, oh, it's kind of a canopy. And it's always a little too hot, but you're like, it's okay. But you're like, okay. you feel like you're outside in downtown San Francisco. So yes. you're like, oh, this is nice. I got the group on actually. I feel like <laughs> this, this should be a drive-through situation. You know, you pull up to a booth. I feel like they got too. They didn't put it in park. They roll. You know what I mean? They That's get carried right. away. Oh, they, yeah, they, they have to get in your in your in your car. They no, get in your just car. Hand. You reach your hand. You got to reach your hand. Oh, you're gonna get a fucked up elbow. 
Does he have to be like this? No, Playing see, the here's window? the thing is you're thinking you're not thinking third dimensionally, <laughs> all right? <laughs> we're not we're not taking over McDonald's. We're building Greg's jerk off stand. So what it would be is yeah. rather than you <laughs> roll down your window to go window to window, you open your door. <laughs> we open the bottom window. And <laughs> <laughs> Also, I, I want you to know that in my mind, I'm envisioning more of a sonic setup. You know? Oh, okay. A bunch of different stations are yeah. all connected to the that. That outside window is filthy. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot there. That is a lot there. <laughs> oh my god! I just wasn't thinking about the structure and the architecture of this place. Yeah, we've got a lot. Of, we've got a lot of the pre-production set up, yeah. but not what happens post-production. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, it is a it is an interesting point. I I I feel like there are a lot of pretty sketchy things that are legal, and I'm shocked that that isn't legal in more places. Agree with that too, and I'm with you. Yes, don't get me wrong. Sex work should be legal, I think. But what I think's interesting is when you breaking it down and like removing where we are right now with the climate of sex work, right? And just like, wait, why is this one okay, but that one's not okay? You mean and why? Like, like, and like you, you think about, it and then and I understand that this is like a couple by couple or relationship by relationship thing, right? Of like when it's like, like how you know, so, so many times you jerk off. Mm-hmm. And it's not strictly a sexual thing in terms of <laughs> it's a sexual thing, but you know what I mean. Where it's not like it's not like, like a romantic thing. Who am I going to vote for? It's, <laughs> not, like it's not like for? a romantic thing. You know what I mean. Where it's like you're not. It's just a something you got to get done. Yeah, you need to get, get it done, sure. right? You know you what I mean. It's not release. like when you want to have sex, you want to go get something done there, right? So it is just like okay. So this is a bodily function. This is a bodily need. Yeah. So and it's so like obviously covered by health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's your goddamn Blue Cross Blue Shield. We accept Anthem. <laughs> we put the sign. That'd up be there. incredible, actually. That actually might actually revive. Like that would that would vastly change our healthcare system. But I think most, and I can't speak for all couples or anything, but uh, you know, most couples don't consider jerking off cheating, like jerking yourself off, right? Masturbating to be cheating. Okay. Oh. So then, if you Not were since like high school, that's like high school shit, where someone's like, "Wait, you you masturbated." You're cheating. If anyone cared if I was masturbating in high school, I would have been the first to tell. You weren't going to stop old Nick Scarpino. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that train left the station a yeah, long time ago. Yeah, but you see, but like you know what I mean of like, okay, so like if that's okay, it's just getting the other party involved. But what if it didn't even matter? I but think, then I guess I mean, even we're thinking at all. So the difference between to, to to be real about this for a second, the difference between the massage and the jerking off is a level of intimacy, right? Sure. Usually, when you're having a massage, you're not. It's not sexual, or it shouldn't be sexual, especially if. You're, you're the person receiving the massage. It should be something that for more relaxation, for meditation, for calmness, for actual muscle soreness, to help you just kind of decompress overall from the day. When you start dipping into the area of like, I kind of want to get off now, that changes the vibe significantly. So I don't I don't agree with the necessarily the thesis that because someone's allowed to touch your back and rub your sore muscles, they should also be allowed to, to get you off. Uh, hey, we're but, all just talking and thinking fair. here. This is just, we're just thinking. But I do believe that they should, that, that sex work should be legal. I think it should be uh, uh, regulated, and I think people should be protected if you are a sex Can worker. you fucking imagine Nick Scarpino post jerk off at Greg's jerk off stand, and then I spin the little thing, and I'm like, all right, and there's just one more thing on the screen for you to do. <laughs> and I look like, away. And I'm like, why is this starting at 35? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, this is a kind of funny podcast each and every week. Four, sometimes three best friends gather on this table, each coming to talk to each other about whatever it is they want to talk about. We mean whatever it is, brother. Uh, if you like that, you of course can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can be watching the show live just like Matthew is, DG Mayer is, and Murders with Mertens, a horror film podcast are. Of course, over on patreon.com slash kindoffunny, you could get each and every episode early. How early? 24 hours before they post anywhere. Roughly. Not really, I guess. More like 12-ish. No, 12 plus 3. 15 hours early. Heard the three. So yeah. early. 15 hours early, ad free as we record them. You get that for every podcast. Of course, you get all the shows ad free. Of course, you uh, could get a bevy of bonus episodes if you've never supported us before. There are more than 260 episodes of exclusive content like Kind of Feudy Greg Way and so much more only on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Just like our monthly merchandise exclusives we put up there only on patreon.com slash kind of funny. But if you got no box, bucks for patreon.com slash kind of funny, no big deal. Of course, you can get every episode of the kind of funny podcast with ads and without any of the fun live stuff over on youtube.com slash kind of funny in podcast services around the globe. Oh, a little housekeeping for you. Elemental in review is live right now. That's right. Pixar in review keeps going. Disney's trying to kill Pixar. 
kind of funny he's keeping it alive. Very true. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Nathan Lamoff. Today we're brought to you by BetterHelp. But Nick has something to say. I was going to say another housekeeping thing. I, oh, I, sure. forgot, I forgot to put it in. I apologize. That's Tim's birthday, Friday. We're going to be celebrating that. Happy birthday, Tim. Hey, Timmy. Uh, Tim's turning the ripe old age of uh, something in his 30s. So we are going to hang out with him uh, from 1130 on probably till about 5 o'clock, we imagine, uh, hopefully, uh, with all your support uh, and celebrate the birthday with him and torture him a lot. So it's going to be fun. It'll be good. Kevin, I'm sorry. You were trying to say something there, but I had a natural yeah. progression. What was it? I, I have a question. Uh, what if... What if we toss in ads first? Or? No, let's no, no, let's no, no, okay. no, no, no. We're, we're like 20 minutes in. Uh, what if it Maybe isn't 40. a person <laughs> that's jerking you off? Robot? Yeah. I, what are the laws on a robot? Now, I on? wish we had technology to be there, but I don't think we're there yet. No, you know uh, what you I mean? You just get a hose <clears throat> connected to, uh, what are those? Vacuum. The fleshlights. Yeah. A little bit of vacuum. I think we're there. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah I but like, there. pop but, off the fleshlight, goes into a dishwasher. That's being handled. You know what I mean? I think that's legal, though. Right? right? Like, I don't know that there is laws. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can make that for yourself at home. Yeah, but I can't I can't open up Greg's jerk-off stand with an automated flesh Yeah, but you can do it like Molly's game. <laughs> right, follow me on this one. Molly's game? Where you just provide the environment, and they, like, tip what they want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They always do that thing where it's, like, donations are, accept- are graciously accepted. Like, there's a place in um, Oakland that, sir, it's, like, a, it's a church. It's a nonprofit. And, and, but, like, as part of their... Sermon, they will give you mushrooms. Oh, okay. but what you, you can like, donate whatever you see gotcha, fit. But the gotcha, don- suggested gotcha. donation, wink. like wink, wink, 20 yeah. bucks, whatever. Yeah, 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 like okay. psychedelic. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's like that's their work. You know, psychedelics like the next big thing that everyone's like, how are we going to legalize these? And it's, it's what I don't think, I don't think anyone gets busted for <laughs> mushrooms. If they do, that's fucking horrible. But um, it's been on my mind a lot because I want to do mushrooms. That's another thing we should talk about. You want to do mushrooms? Yeah, kind of. Wow. I've been thinking a lot of comics. I don't though. think that's good for you. Really? Yeah. I've, you're so you're always up here. You're always up here in the old Nick Scarpino. Yeah, dome. I want to get out of here and into. But what about when you ingest? <laughs> you will walk to Greg's jerk house, Dan. Thirty-five percent tip. I think you, I think you're welcoming a world of horror. And you think you think I'm going to look into this my soul and see darkness? No, I just think you're going to have a bad trip and freak the hell out. Yeah, that's no, what no, I would there with too. me, Andy. <laughs> when? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it in your room. No, I, it. I I I could never. Really? A psychedelic like that, I could never. I, I want to do it. I don't, I have no, I, I know I make a lot of jokes about cocaine, and I know that Blessing was shocked to learn that I've never done it, and still does <laughs> not believe it. He was very surprised. <laughs> Literally, the other day, he was like, Come on, you've done coke. <laughs> I was like, No, I've never done it before. But for whatever reason, the psychedelics, the, these drugs that like unlock these parts of your, they're supposed to be unlock these parts of your brain, yeah. you know, like get you to get to know yourself more. It's intriguing to me in my old age. Do you, you feel know? like you don't know yourself, though? No, I think I know myself very much, but, like, but you always want it to be like, Oh, if, like, if I do the drug, will I eliminate stage fright? Or if mm. I do the drug, will I will it like unlock something in me that goes, oh, here's the path to a different level of creativity? It has nothing to do with like I'm unhappy as a human being because I love my life and I love the things we get to do. I'm just always curious, like, can it take it to the next level? Or does it mellow you out and finally you just go, oh, I'm just in this wonderful meditative moment of like existing in the present? It's one of these things. See, my thought would be I, I wouldn't want it to change me the opposite, right? Where I hit a new... You like button up. I hit like, this new... Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. But I, you hit this Mike new high and you're ideas. always chasing it, right? That's where like addiction yes. comes in. Or you never do it again, but then, you know, it just does... The other stuff doesn't feel as good anymore because of it. Yeah, fair. I mean, I mean and then those are all fair assessments. I don't know that... that um, mushrooms do that specifically. Like I, I know that like Molly and things that really severely really your fuck brain your chemistry brain, yeah, yeah. and fuck up your uh, your your hormone system for a few days. I know people because that's the number one thing I hear um, when I hang out with people who have just done Molly. They're like, I'm so fucking tired and so depressed because your everything just dumps and like all of your um, Kevin, what's the happy dopamine, serotonin. dopamine and serotonin just goes and it, it takes like a week to get that back into your system. Okay, that has no, I, I I don't care about that. In the live chat here, Cody Hagler says, microdosing mushrooms is supposed to be very beneficial for your mental well-being. Well, okay, Cheech. Yeah. I mean? What's up, Stony Baloney? Yeah, exactly, right? No wonder he keeps his Instagram private. Yeah, wow. He's over there just putting truffles, (laughs) psychedelic truffles on top of (laughs) the Like that butter? Melissa, be careful. Melissa, keep your eye on your brother slash husband. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always just worried about, you know, like if I had an exit button, and oh, vacuum, sure, I can end it. If I could end like the trip, mm-hmm. I would absolutely do every drug. <laughs> wow. I would try every drug. See, I wouldn't do every drug because there's certain like Coke, 
that the shit where like there was there were stories. About well, I guess more the stuff that makes you hallucinate. Coke with fentanyl and it immediately makes you OD. I'm like, I don't want that shit. No, like the stuff that like makes you hallucinate and go to like different oh, yeah. realms and shit. You're to see that's why I want the evacuation yeah. button now. Where like, oh my god, I'm having a bad trip. I'm freaking the fuck out. Boop. Okay, God, thank God, I'm out of there. Yeah. You know, like uh, that's the stuff that I worry about because I've had bad trips on fucking weed and like that is nothing <laughs> See, that, and that's that's what what's given me pause throughout the years is that my body chemistry just does not react positively to marijuana or to cannabis rather i just don't i thought like, you're doing edibles for a while i was doing C, uh, cbt edibles oh okay. which is just the the non-psychoactive element that's supposed to calm me down but even that shit i stopped doing it after a while because i had my dreams they weren't nightmares but they were dreams where it was like it was almost as if a manager came up to me and was like, okay, what would we like to try to clear out today? Let's talk about all your anxiety, uh, that thing that you thought about in third grade, this thing, let's relive those moments. Mm -hmm. And I'd wake up like I just went to work. Mm -hmm. And I felt good, but I was like, oh my God, that was the most stressful fucking thing ever because my brain was just super active. So I just don't, I just think anything that has to do with weed at all, my body just doesn't work with. With, as a, you know, contrast that to alcohol where I have like a little bit of tequila and I'm like, this is the greatest world ever. We live on the best planet in the entire universe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I'm just totally. so fucking happy yeah. the whole time. So I think that kind of tells me something. But I'm curious. I am curious about uh, about mushrooms. I had a dream the other day that I took a, a a baby to a video game event to see it, but we got there late. Not Ben, just a random. No, baby. I turned on not to be Ben, and then I kind of walked like an ape. <laughs> That's either here or not. That's either here or not. Just a detail I needed. Yeah, yeah I just, that's really terrible. Yeah, it was. The baby didn't look right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was walking like an ape. You know? It had really long arms. But it was like when it, because it was like, I was. Baby didn't look right. I went there, and I'm in the back of this video game event, and it was like some developer that I had meant to see earlier, but yeah. we were there late, and it was I want to say like me and Blast, maybe you and me, Andy. And it was like, we got there, but then I had the baby, but then the baby started crying. And then I realized it was five o'clock. I'm like, oh, we got to feed this baby. And I was like, but wait, what can the baby eat? Jen? And I was like, Jen's going to be mad. And I was like, oh, I got to. But then I was like, wait, Ben can eat real food. So this baby must be Ben, and I'll take it to Square Pie Guys. Yeah. And then we, the baby started talking to me. <laughs> And then we got out to the streets, yeah, and the baby pushed off me and had this, like, ape walk. And I'm like, oh, no, baby, don't walk on the sidewalk. In oh, you look, you look weird. Yeah. Just climbing up a building. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> Spider. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. And uh, every one of my dreams is either, it, when you mention, it was either you or Bless, that's, like, 99% of my dreams where a person who was somebody in the prior scene is now somebody different. That's yeah, just, yeah, you gotta, it's, it's hard to keep it all straight. I wonder if that's, like... A, it, you know, because people always say that you can kind of guess what people are going through based on what they're dreaming, right? Yeah. And I wonder if that's one of the characteristics of some sort of personality trait where people change people within dreams. Mm -hmm. But every one of my dreams is just basically I'm back at Best Buy. Yeah. I'm back in school. Oh, yeah. And I'm on the final day of school and I went 11 classes without ever going to one of them and i was like oh my god i forgot about that class holy shit how am i gonna get through this and another recent one i've had recently where suddenly i'm back i'm in like a high school and the it's pitch black like i'm in a school at nighttime and i'm having to na navigate through the pitch black and i'm just like going downstairs and trying to find how to get out mm. horrifying <laughs> like don't recommend those fucking dreams do you guys, i think it was melatonin do you guys ever try to figure out what real life elements your brain picked apart to make those dreams like the next day like sometimes i'll remember the dream so vividly be like why was i like running through a field being chased by lawyers or something like that right sure and then i'll think Watch liar, liar. then i'll think to myself oh wait i walked around the park all day uh, you know all day today over in north beach or whatever and then oh, i watched Lord. five episodes of suits and <clears throat> And like those things together are mixing in your brain to make this weird cocktail of fucking weird dreams. Mm -hmm. And every, I mean, I, for the most part, I don't remember my dreams. When I do, I remember waking up being like, where'd all that come from? And what's my brain trying to tell me? And is it important or should I just go watch TV? It's so wild that Greg can make it. Greg mentioning that his uh, child kind of looked like an ape is probably going to. Just that statement alone is probably going to trigger something where I'm going to have a whole dream about monkeys. Yeah. Like, and it's always just. The random throwaway line of, oh, yeah, I was, well, no, I was late because I was watching this movie. And, like, suddenly my whole dream will be about that one movie. And it's just, like, really? That's all it took for, like, 
Give me the lucid dreams, man, because I'm flying everywhere in my lucid dreams. I had some weird ass dreams after playing Zelda. Really? <laughs> yeah, huh? I was like fucking shit sticking together. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See, I don't. That's not how my my, my mind works. Well, we, I don't ever. We yeah. know that about you. Great comment. Possibly, it's gonna be hard to beat this. This is probably a comment to the show. Uh, Brian Lund in the Patreon chat says, "I used to have dreams about hunting dinosaurs in high school." Dot dot dot. As I got older. The dinosaurs were hunting me. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. All right, Brian. Well, so you were chasing adulthood, and now adulthood is chasing you, and you want to go back to being a child. God damn, look at that Joseph yeah. over here. Look Where's at your you. Technicolor dream coat? You know what I mean? <laughs> What's up, Did you say Roy? Joseph? Yeah, Joseph in the Technicolor dream coat. What is that? A musical? Take up, take up, and sons. Man, you really didn't like God when you were growing up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what the fuck oh, that man. is. You, you know Joseph. Dude, like, in the, the Bible? Bible. Yeah, okay, dude, yeah. Remember, he interpreted dreams all the time. Really? Yeah, that was his whole shtick. And oh, his, I didn't know that. His brothers were jealous because his father liked him the most, so they faked his fucking death, and then he got sold off as a slave, and then he was a, he interpreted oh. the kings of things, and then he had a great coat. They, they dad gave him the coat, God. and that was one of the reasons the brothers hated him so much. And like, you know what? Let's fucking take the coat and act like we killed him. Or he, I think they blamed a ram for Mullen really? or some shit. They brought back the coat. They're like, oh, he got fucking killed. Damn, I would have never Joseph known Joseph and the that. Amazing... This wow. Cool. This is... <laughs> Photo taken with Jesus. this is the prototype for the first digital camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is like if you said to AI, please give me, please give me a photo, Joseph, of the technical dear, right. uh, dear chat GPT, what do colors look like together? <laughs> oh, Cody Hagler, I have the losing teeth dreams all the time. Oh, I hate those. Mm. Oh, I, either like losing them or. I'm feeling like several are loose, and I'm like, oh my Ooh. gosh, these are about to fall out. What, what's going to be the bit. process here? <laughs> How do I take this on right I now? I don't like that at all. Nightmare. I woke up to a real nightmare. Woke up in a nightmare today. Got up. This is this real life. There's a much better that's code. Better. Thank you. Is that? Donny Osmond. Oh, I thought it was Wayne Newton. Well, it, no, that's Donny Osmond. Okay, right. cool. That, my brain pulled Woke up one. today. You know, Ben's in the other room. He's, he's going, Dada, mommy. Like he always does it to wake us up. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. And I open the door and immediately just pop. Hit with the smell of shit. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 he goes poopy, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can smell it, buddy. I know. Yeah. It. I know. And we've had a couple blowouts recently, <laughs> where you know, I mean, like, I there are a couple days. Like, I was almost, late, I was really late to the Nintendo thing, or you weren't even on that, were you? No. Nint Nintendo reacts. I came in hot. Like, literally, sat. By the time I got everything on, Barrett was like, all right, and oh, Greg's here, good, go, do live. Like, the warmth from the shit was making you hot. <laughs> well, it's because you get in there, you open up the sleep, you, you you pick him up, you put him down, and it's the sleep sack. It's coming out his leg. It's on a sleep sack. Okay, well, now we got a counter, and this is a harder proposition. Today's was Armageddon. <laughs> Today's was, and I mean, I bless this kid because he sleeps like a rock. You yeah. know what I mean? He's blessed us with a great sleep schedule since birth or whatever. But today he like and through last night at some point just fucking diarrhea <laughs> and kept on sleeping. So like I turn on like poopy, I'm like I can smell it, buddy, and like I pick him up and like his white sleep sack is like tan up to his nipples, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> At that point, you just like, do you just dip him in water? Like, you just rip it all off, throw it out. And so I brought him over, and I, I like, I, you know, I'm still like waking up to how bad this is. You know what I mean? Because I'm waking yeah. up too, and I, I move him over towards the changing table, and I'm like, no, no, this isn't back. good enough. And this I go, it, I yeah. go back to the bed he's already in that's contaminated, and then I'm like, okay, it's like a massive uh, car wreck taking <laughs> to a like jiffy loop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's like okay, like cool, work. and then like Jen can hear me being like, oh, okay, well this is, that. and I'm like panicking again. Like I, you know, we've had poop incidents or whatever, and we've yeah. had them before. We'll have them again. Poop incidents. And it was at a, very good, very mm -hmm. good. Um, Jen's like, do you need help? I'm like, yeah, this is an all hands on deck situation. And so I, yeah, right into the bathroom, where then I yeah, you gotta hit the big red alert button yeah, on the wall. <laughs> brah, brah, brah. And like I had unzipped him, and then yeah, Jen oh, brought in the garbage oh, bag oh, that we then put him in the garbage bag, like you know, at his feet first, and then took off all the straps and let it fall into the trash. You know what I mean? Smart. And then yeah, I was like. I tried. I was like, "Bring me wet wipes," and I'm trying. I'm like, "No, we got to go straight to multiple washing stages of getting this kid yeah, clean again, or whatever." Gotta yeah, run through the but it was like our wash machine, like <laughs> so acidic. The smell, yeah, like vomit smelling, but poop because it had been marinated. Yeah, oh. yeah. She used that phrase today too, and oh, apparently up until oh. very the, the house is it still smells like it smells like Jesus. Yeah. Like Man, we're struggling, like, a, like when the skunk ran through Kevin's house. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we're, we're in the middle of some things over there at our house, but that's that's rough. We'll get there. What a disaster of a thing to wake up to. You know, I don't mind it as much as you think I would. You know what I mean? Like I feel like something about it of like the. Okay, this is a problem that needs to be solved. Yeah. And it's a problem that you can solve right now. Yeah. Versus the other problems in our lives that have to limp on or do whatever. But it's also a problem that you know is not, that's not the last time you're going to have to deal with that. A. Oh, yeah. B, it's your blood. It's your son. My blood. Your blood. Oh, my, my boy. <laughs> so, um, 
that's probably that. I mean, you know, this, this is part of fatherhood. This is what you signed sure. up for. Oh yeah, I know. No, it's no. gonna be part. There's gonna be part of you. Spoilers. Misses it. That misses it twenty years from now. I think about that a lot. Yeah. Not the poop part of it, but like you know, any part of it of him cuddling with cartoons mm-hmm. or wanting to you know throw his arms around my neck or just be carried or whatever. It's like you know, eventually this kid doesn't want nothing to do with me. What well, was it? You? Uh, maybe it wasn't you. And I apologize if the statistic hits you hard, but it was like one of those. Did you know that after the age of 18, like the majority of the time, the time, oh, you did? Yeah, it was like something like 93% of the time you'll spend with your child is like after 18. Yeah, it's like you got 7% left. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Think about from 18 on, you only see like your parents and your family, like seven seven to 10% of what you would have your entire life. Oh, God. Of course, that's the average. There's all sorts of people who are like, you know. I mean, there's like, never leave home. There's, there's the Italians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Mom lives upstairs. So you're like, yeah, that's what it is. That's, yeah. that's East Coast yeah. stuff. But I, mean, I think about that all the time. Sure. That's I'm like, I'm like, I'm the, I'm a terrible son. I should be going down. My parents are in Southern California. I should be going down there every month, like once a weekend. But it's just so easy to make those excuses. A lot of 80s of like, movies gotta, on Netflix, though. A lot of life to live. Up yeah. There, you know, I'm sure that's what they want to a degree, there. right? They want you to, they want you to go out yeah, there. Yeah, sure. I mean, when I'm you, a lot. when you go home, Nick, <laughs> what's the What's the like sleeping situation? Hotel. Okay. Yeah. You're not sleep like there's not a spare room or you sleep on the floor. Uh, you know, my brother, I'll sleep or... with my brother sometimes. Okay. Um, but I just your brother's got a spare room. He's got a spare room and he's got a great house. Uh, my parents do as well. But I just it's more for me than it is for them. And I hate to say this and I hate to be selfish, but it's I just can't be around people that much. And like I love my family, but I've realized that if my cutoff with them is like, hey, at five o'clock, I'd love to have go to, to a hotel. Have my own space. And I'm not talking like I'm staying at a bougie. I'm like Best Western or whatever I can say. They get a break. They get their life back for five hours or whatever. They don't have to cater to me or, or do any of that stuff. Let's get together at lunch tomorrow. And then we have a good good five hours of just hang time. Everyone's slept. Quantity of time versus quality of time. Exactly. Um, Are you so, sure that that's what they want, though? No. My dad would prefer it if I was at his house so that he could talk to me at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then... Be there with me while I'm watching a movie at two o'clock in the morning, falling asleep, snoring next to me, so I can't pay attention to the movie. Mm. That is what my dad wants, and I and sometimes I do it. I'm I'm happy to stay there as long as I can, but I realize like I can be, like if I'm not well rested, I do not have the patience for my family. And you've all met my brother; he is great. But Matt with Elena and Big Lou, and they can't hear that great anymore, and everyone's talking over each other. And then the excitement of wanting to know what's going on in my life. And it's this and it's that. It's just it can be overwhelming for me. And yeah. I don't I don't like I don't like dipping into a place where I'm like, I'm either gonna shut down or I'm gonna be snippy with people. So as a this is like probably the most adult thing I'll ever say, I have to make the adult decision to, to limit the time that we all spend with each other so that I can be well rested, well fed, and have the patience to actually enjoy my time with my family. I have a question for you on this. Sure. Uh and I don't yeah, this I don't think would sound like I Everything you just said is so intelligent and so smart, and so you know that. Did you find that on your own, or was that D, or was that therapy, or was that like? Because it sounds like you've been equipped with like here's tools oh, to do this stuff. A lot of it was yeah, talking through talking through moments of pain or challenge in our relationships in therapy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Of having of ha- me of having people go, why do you think you got to a point where you're frustrated with your family or whatever? And a lot of it was, I'd come off a of Comic Con or E3. Sure. And I would just the worst not. time to go around other people. And then my dad and my mom would be like, "We're really excited to see you." And I'd be like, "Ah, like, well, why, why do you have to wake me up at, in the morning?" And they're like, "You know, it's eleven o'clock." They're there with like the tray of the pancakes. Well, we and the just one had rose. Shit, you know, <laughs> hey, we were gonna go do this thing, but I'm tired, so I learned from that. Okay, let's. What's the takeaway there? I love my family. I want to enjoy being with them, but maybe I see them before E3. Maybe I go down. The Thursday, Friday before I drink for five days straight and party and have nothing left in the tank for anyone. That's yes. the, it's just not fair to them. Oh no! To give yeah. them the husk of the being that I am after comic. Hundred percent. Hundred. So I was like, okay, I'll go down before, and then it just it moves to, I can't stay with them because I need to be able to to be like I need to know that I can sleep until like ten o'clock the next day and not. You know, feel like you're inconveniencing them, slowing their plans down, throwing their day off, or at the end of the day, feel like they have to tiptoe around their own home. Because they're going to wake me up, gotcha. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, because you always get in this. Again, I love my parents. They're probably going to watch this. No disrespect to Lou and Elena. But they go like this. Like some. Do you know what the thing is? What? 
Well, with the thing. Where's the thing? Oh, I don't know where the thing is. Nikki's sleeping. Shut up. He's sleeping. <laughs> At that point, I'm like, well, I'm not sleeping uh, anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, the dog yeah. starts barking immediately. Yeah. And, then this, and he was like, well, shit, everyone's up. I'll just mow the lawn. I'm like, well, okay, what are we doing here, guys? You're playing in a flyover head. <laughs> but a lot of that is a lot of that is me just trying to be, you know, sensitive to what other people need and 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 really just I don't get that much time with them. So I'm like, I need to go. Like we went down for Memorial Day and I was like, got there. At, my flight was at nine o'clock. I was like, "That's good. I could sleep in a little bit." Got there. We we partied from twelve to fucking six straight. Damn. And it was drinks and uh, barbecuing. And I saw my cousins that I haven't seen in like five years. And one of them's like going through some stuff. And it was like awesome to bond. It was this great familial moment. And then I was like, "I'm gonna leave. This is perfect. Let's not push this too far." Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And my mom was like, "See you later. I love you. Come back soon." Cried, of course. I hugged her. Love her. See you later. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's a good way to do it. I think so. I think so. I hear you've had a tragic event. Oh, like, yeah. But before we get to that, okay. I'll tell you all about patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, of course, you can go be part of the show just like Juan is, Cooper is, and Tyler are. Uh, patreon.com slash kind of funny allows you to watch us record the podcast the day before uh, we post them anywhere else. Of course, you get them ad free. Of course, you get them on demand ad free. Of course, you could get a bevy of bonus shows over there, hundreds of episodes of Kind of Feudy, Greg Way, Next Gen Podcast. And of course, you get some exclusive merch too. But guess what, Jack? You're not on patreon.com slash kind of funny. So here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. I know this from experience, how often it just seems easier to care about others and to keep it moving. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burnt out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my very best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash kind of funny today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kind of funny. Now, Nick. Yeah. I got a text from you this weekend that sent... A shiver down my spine yeah but i thought it wasn't that bad yeah. but you're telling me it's so much worse yeah what happened to you so as you know andy we were joking around last week i was like i got i started getting a ghost touch on my phone now this is a this is a six-year-old yeah, iphone 10 right yeah and i was like oh, i'll go get the screen fix for it well it's either get the screen fixed or get a new iphone and i kind of want to wait till the newest iphones come out because theoretically they're supposed to have USB C. obviously i keep my phone for six years i'm like that's going to be real great I can just get the screen replaced. It's a little bit more money than I want to spend. Yeah. Because uh, it's 300 bucks to get your phone replaced, or screen replaced, which is the stupid amount of money to spend on an old phone. Every single person I talked to was like, the guy was like, sure you want to do this? At the Apple store. And he's not, I don't think he's supposed you to. You want to pay for this $3,000 repair on this 1998 Ford Honda Fiesta? Civic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, you really should put that to a new phone. I was like, I know I should. But I got the new ones coming out, and I just want to squeeze like six more months out of life out of this. So I don't have to. So I feel like, you know, I'll get it in January or whatever, and then I'll keep the phone. The guy's sure. like, that makes sense. He goes, but you know, honestly, you could probably just take it to like one of those kiosks in the mall. He's like, I'm not even supposed to tell you that, but he's like, this is just a terrible idea what you're doing. And I was like, well, honestly, the reason I'm doing it here at Apple is because I'm paying to get it done right. And the guy's like, totally understand. You know, obviously, this is an OEM screen. We're going to take care of it. We'll make sure everything's good. And then he goes, but in the unlikely event that all of your information gets deleted, like, do you have a backup? And I was like, I don't know. I think so. I've been told by Apple multiple times <laughs> that I'm running out of space on my iCloud. So I have had to upgrade multiple times because I'm running out of space on my iCloud. I have 200 gigabytes of iCloud space. The guy looks at my phone and goes, yep, you've got a backup. All this stuff's backed up. You should be good to go. But they're not going to have to restore your phone unless something cataclysmic happens. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, they're going to have to restore my phone, right? Screen goes back. Come back in an hour and a half. I come back in an hour and a half. I'm walking around the mall looking for one of those massage things. Speaking of massage. Greg I was like, jerk oh. off. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I mean, I can get jerked off real quick. Um, 
Greg Jarre going, ah, they're closed today. It's no, <laughs> I was like, what do I do for an hour and a half without my phone? You're talking about the chairs? Uh, the, the chairs. Massage I wanted chairs. to do the shoulder massages, right? Um, couldn't find the damn thing because they used to be right above, you know, in Stonestown, they used to be right above the escalators. I don't know where the hell these things were. That, that's, that's, I got, uh, yeah, I got that massage. Yeah. And I thought maybe COVID killed the, that business. So I was like, that sucks. I go get lunch. I'm people watching. I'm experiencing the world in a way I haven't seen in 15 years since smartphones came out. Yeah, you can't bury Whatever. your head in the phone. Yeah. Go back at 2 30, like, sir, your phone's not ready. They're having a problem getting it to connect to the diagnostic. And I was like, okay, what does that mean? They go, um, it's trying to take over the system. Well, they were like, we, we're sorry to say this, but we have to, we have to restore your phone in order to get it to come back in order to make sure everything got installed correctly. I was like, okay, but I have the backup, right? They're like, yep, you got the backup. Cool. Get the phone back. And the guy's like, look, here's what you need to do. Don't restore the phone from your backup because if this was a software issue, if one of the programs was fucked up, it'll just, it'll just restore your phone. That program will get reinstalled on it. And if there's something that's on your phone, that's fucking it up. It'll just forever, every backup of every phone, it'll just get reinstalled. So he's like, what I think you should do is, just go online and just do your contacts and your photos and you have to download all the other apps yourself and re-log in. It's going to take you probably half a day. I was like, no problem. I'll do it as I come. Right. Leave the store like a fucking idiot. I'm on the way home and I go and I go to look at my photos. Oh, we're about to I'm do like, interview, right? Uh, uh, yes, I think, right? Because I think you came oh, no, back I went here after without the interview. your phone. I went, oh, when okay. I came back, I was, I was going home and I was like, that's weird. My photos haven't popped back up. My contacts have, but only half of them. So I was like, I don't have Chris's number. So I was like, shit, that's weird. Start logging back into my system. Start and the contacts start coming back. And I was like, okay, everyone's info comes slowly back. slowly coming. Yeah. Right. That's why I had like I had like five numbers for him. So I was like, which one is his number? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I got how my photos aren't coming. I was like, no problem. I'll log into my iCloud because you can all log in separately. I'll check, make sure the photos are there. I'll just come back to Apple the next day. Now, granted, I had two hundred gigs of shit on my phone. Fifteen years of photos and videos since the iPhone 4S, my very first iPhone. I've never deleted a single picture from this goddamn phone. Log on to iCloud.com. Look, 10 gigabytes full. And it's just data. It's just like whatever the base 10 gigabytes is of the operating system and like your notepad. And I was like, huh. And I hear D go, what's up? And I was like, I'm pretty sure I just lost every single photo I've ever taken on my phone and video. And she was like, Okay, well, go back. So I'm going back this week to double check that they can do it. But as of right now, if you look at my photos and videos on my phone, one cup of coffee, it one is. screenshot I took accidentally, <laughs> no photos or videos. Wow. Oh no! Yeah. And you would think that I would be super bummed out, and I was. There was a moment where I actually felt a supreme sense of loss, but it was quickly followed. By this serene feeling Freedom. of relief. Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to say anger. <laughs> oh, no. I was pissed. Not at Apple. I was pissed at myself for rushing this process and candidly making the wrong choice. I should have just got a fucking iPhone 14. Just get a goddamn new phone. Sit there. Get a cup of coffee. Make sure shit's backed up. Never rush these choices. Or get a new yeah. phone every three years. Whatever, right? <laughs> my, this is 100% my fault. I do not blame Apple for this in any way, shape, or form. But I do. There was a, a, a sense of like, huh. Now I just get to. Now, granted, I would have been. Probably in tears were it not for the fact that every single picture I've ever taken on trips with my wife, our wedding, these things, my wife had the good sense to go, let me see your phone and send herself those pictures. Sure. So D's got the majority of the really important things, the times with our families, the times with our trips together. There's probably a lot of pictures I'm not thinking about and choosing not to think about that are gone that I'm, I'm just going to remember. Like there was one picture from New York that I was like, you have that picture of you in Central Park, right? She's like, and I almost started crying. I was yeah. like, God damn it. This is going to be more of those. But I was hit by like this, this, this profound sense of like relief of no longer having to carry with me 10,000 pictures. Let's be honest, 99% of which Girl. are a picture of Greg, another picture of Greg, another picture of Greg. A different, a Greg's not looking at this picture. This one, he's, you know what I mean? Oh, this is the one I send to Roger or whatever it is. And that's, that's more all of my pictures. So I'm like, it's actually kind of cool to start over, but I am going to go back and see if there's any way they can restore my iCloud because... I just I owe it to myself to try. To In do the that, lead up to this wild. phone, I I before I got this new phone or whatever my current phone, I had you know it was like the life uh, before Ben and then life after Ben, where I always you know was buying like I forget which tier of gigabytes for my phone or whatever, but I was fine. But I'm the same as you where I don't delete photos. Right. I just had everything forever on there, and then it was you know Ben comes and suddenly 
it's an exponential more amount of video I'm right. taking, right? So I was bumping up against like, oh, you're out of space, you're out of space, you're out of space. And I bought one of those uh, programs that would help you clean up. Right. And you go in there and it's like, yeah, you, you know, I, I always joke around and I took one uh, photojournalism class and they always talked about, you know, work the shoot. If you're on a shoot, get a million shots of what you need. So one. anytime you see me with an unboxing or anything, right. or there's... 19 other photos that look identical to that oh yeah which you don't think about until you're out of space and then it's 15 years of fucking millions of the same thing and then it would go through and find them and delete them for me if i said yes yada, yada, yada. yeah and so like when i i did that to clear it to give me space but then of course when i bought my new phone i just went to the next highest threshold of it because of course i don't want to think about it but i know i'm going to run into it again here because like you know just keep making ben videos of like and greg weighs on it that i then forget to delete that yeah, i have a exactly. 15 minute video on here of me talking to a camera it's like okay you got to go through and you got to figure all this stuff out and so yeah like i i'm with you of like i love having everything on there it still blows people away like you know media mike or whatever when i'll send him a photo fo- well, talk for the first time in years and i sent him some stupid photo that we took in 2008 yeah you know what i mean that i have it on the phone or whatever i love that part of it but then the majority of them are like when i was trying to delete before i'm like god what could i delete and i was like wait a second you know you search by word Highest i just put in food yeah and like every photo i've ever taken of food i'm like yeah. just i you know select and then went just deleted thousands of photos of wings and shit that i had made in new york or whatever and so it's like if I was to lose everything, I'm lucky that I've obviously posted so much online that it would be there, that I have Google Drive folders of the really important stuff, the wedding photos, right. you know, this, that, and the other, Ben fo- photos and things like that. But it, I can see the freedom in it, but I can also see it. I also know the pain of it. Yeah. It's, like, it's like when you lose a lot of runes in Elden Ring and you're like, oh. you know what? Oh. Now I have nothing to lose anymore. Yeah. yeah. You're free. But you always remember. I'm free of this burden. You'll yeah. always remember, like, that's, that's at least four levels. I like, got leveled yeah. up right there. Now, what I wanted to ask Nick was, um, first off, why are you a six-year phone person? Um, because it's so... I just want to, like... Phone every phone every... I just want to, th- like... Every year. I distinctly remember us giving him shit and Tim giving him shit. When I first got hired in 2017, and... Then being like, just get a new phone, dude. Why do you wait so long to get your phone? And it being such this... And back then, we were making the same jokes of uh, my small phone. <laughs> like, the small phone jokes were still <laughs> present back then. Yeah. And it's so weird that, like, wow, six years have gone by. We're in the same spot now. To the point now where, you know, any phone Nick grabs on, he's like, I have such a big phone. My little small phone over here. Oh, no. I, t- I, t- I told you the story. I think I think I said it on in review where I was like, I, have, I can't function without a phone for an hour and a half so after an hour i gave up and i was like i'm going back to the apple store just so i can have a phone in front of me to look at youtube videos. oh that's funny and i picked up the 14 pro max and started scrolling through i was like is that 120 hertz it's refresh rate? nice screen like, that's nice <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh this is fun to interact with um it was at that moment i was like you made the wrong choice you should have just gotten a new phone and i will get a new phone but it's for three reasons mainly um one if you buy a new phone every year it's money right you you're spending 50 like what 30 bucks a month or whatever to just be on that plan where you're forever just buying phones which is fine if you like to have the newest biggest thing that's that's your prerogative i like to get the most money bang for my buck out of things you know like i keep my cars for as long as i possibly can i like to fix things um part of that is is financials is just that you just get more you know this phone cost 1200 bucks when i bought it It was six years ago so i've got a lot of good you know value out of it um but more than that i don't like the idea there's just a part of me that thinks that it's wasteful to get a new phone every year. Because granted, you're selling it back and they're reselling it and it's probably going to someone that you know can't afford a brand new phone or it's going somewhere. I don't know where they go. But we do have a level of consumerism in our world that is disconcerting to me, right? People get cars every two years. They get phones every two years. Like, everyone needs to consume this stuff every, as fast as they possibly can. And this concept of everything being the newest and the best and the greatest and you constantly being sold this stuff bothers me. It really does. Like it bothers me on a level that it shouldn't, but it does. So when everyone upgrades their phone every year, I go, why? What is that phone giving you that your last phone didn't give you? Are you really seeing a value, a market value in these things? And Tim himself will be like, no. I just get the new phone because I like having the new phone. And for what we do, it kind of makes sense because you have to kind of be I was understanding say, what's going on I, I, with the new phones. I, I, 
I'm uh, the iPhone. What is it? I want to say every, every day, but that's not iPhone every year. What I, I right. do the I do the plane where I just constantly have a fucking loan with iPhone where right. I'm paying them thirty bucks or whatever. You're leasing a phone basically. Yeah, you never exactly. really own the phone. Spoilers. Yeah. You, you lease the phone. Well, and I've done it where I didn't upgrade two years ago, so I did end up paying off the loan. And yeah, you paid it phone, off, and then I went in there, you know, and whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for me, it's it's because. I, I do it because, yeah, I, I love having latest, greatest, sure, but it is for the job. It is, I want the camera to be the best. I want the sure. to post, I want it to use the internet faster. Like, it's the most important device I own because it is the one that I use for business, for pleasure, for everything, and I use every day. And, like, to a detriment, sure, I guess, in terms of, like, if we want to get I, into the conversation, oh, social media, this, that, and the other. But, I mean, like, legitimately, like, I wake up and I look at email, which isn't healthy, but we run a business and I want to know what's going on. And then it's using Twitter, it's using Instagram, and like, sure, it's social media, but it's also part of the it's gig. The daily driver that needs to be the most stuff. dependable. Yeah. yeah, it's that, blah, blah, blah. Like, and I totally get And look, I'm on 4G. I don't even have a 5G network on this. Yeah, yeah. So that in and of itself, I totally understand that. And I probably should look, take a hard look at my life and be like, maybe every three years is the right play for that. Pay off the phone, have a year of it. Where it's paid because I think it takes two years to pay off the phone. Yeah, that's right. Um, have a year of it and then get on the three year cycle, which is kind of what I used to be on. But for whatever reason, in this one, honestly, once they moved away from that bullshit where they were like, oh, your battery life's dying to save whatever the fuck that shit was, my battery life is great on this phone. The phone's still great. Yeah. And you don't know what you're missing until you pick up a 14 and go, yeah. holy shit, yeah, this yeah. is the future, right? Um, yeah, I just think that Apple is a great company. I have a lot of friends that work for Apple. But they are hosing you on a lot of this stuff. Like, obviously, when I walked in, and they could have fixed the screen for probably $50, maybe $100, right? But it's $300. Do you know why? Because somebody did a cost-benefit analysis. They did a lot of reports and said $300 is the point where people go, fuck it, I'll just buy a new phone. Right? It is. Well, and it's also the fact of, like, you know, that is such an easy pitch for them for then for Apple Care. Right, because if you had Apple Care, it's like ninety bucks to fix it. But like, no, you it didn't fix it for free. Oh, whatever it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if I had Apple Care, see, and like, here's back to your thing yeah. of like, that's what like, one of the reasons I do it. You know what I mean? And people, it happens all the time. I bring out my phone. You don't have a case on it, and I'm like, I oh, know, I'm, I'm on the iPhone, everything. So what do I care if yeah. something happens to it? Because it like, remember when we went mm -hmm. to England that one time for kind of funny? I walked in the hotel room, turned oh around to God. say something. The, the door hit it, smashed my phone. I went to an Apple store in London. And I'm like. Yeah, like your stuff carries, and we could just give you because I'm backed up to the cloud all the mm -hmm. time or whatever. Like you could take it out, but we don't have the one you have. And I just bought a case, and then I kept it for the entire year just to get to yeah. trading it in. Which, if you remember, we were playing Diablo. I went to call Jack Quaid and brought it out, and it got caught in my pocket and went dunk dunk, and I picked it up and it had some, cracked the back screen. Yeah, and it was the back, and it was the spider web crack that went up, and yep. it was just cracked. It wasn't smashed or anything. And I was like. No big deal. I'm going to ride this out to the new phone this year and get to the thing or whatever. And see. Then Jen uh -oh. needed oh, my no. phone yesterday when we were pulling into train town up in Sonoma, right? And she, like, had it in her lap and did whatever she needed to do and then opened the door and got out. And I heard it go, and she's like, oh, no. I'm like, it's no big deal. And she picked it up and like, oh, it's worse than it was before. I'm like, I don't care. And now you can see through my phone to see whatever oh. <laughs> microchip is in the Let back there doing whatever. Oh, that's bad. About so that. I'm going to I'm gonna bring get, back the transparent device. I'm going to get I'm going to go to an Apple store and cash in my Apple care. of like, hey, I need to get this thing. I think. Yeah. Give me the refurb. <laughs> and that's the thing. The guy was literally like, you know, you can get on the every year plan. Yeah. He's like, you could for the same amount of money. Because it's only, what is it, $40 a month to get? Yeah, something like something that. Something like 35 You figure 35 40 bucks a month. Let's, say, let's call it 50 because that's an even number that we can sure. we can figure out. I spent $300, right? For $50 a month, I could get a phone, a brand new phone for six months, and then probably have just traded it in for a new phone. You right? would go in and they would say, oh, well, since your other loan isn't up, you have to pay like an extra 50 or whatever. Right. Because you didn't go the year or whatever. And I could have done that, and I should have done that. But in my brain, I'm like, this is going to be as easy as... Yeah, I work, come back, don't have to worry about backing anything up, done it, yada, yada, yada. And then I don't need to worry necessarily about when I get the new phone because that's the other thing is I hate the feeling of new phones coming out. Got to get it, got to get it. They they do that artificial, oh, we don't have enough phones for you, oh, yada, yada, yada. And everyone's fucking waiting in line at the Apple store again. But here's what? the thing. I hear you and I agree with you. And I think you and I both lived through the start of the iPhone and when it was crazy and it was nuts. That is... It's almost like we talk about when we talk about Halo now of like, oh man, like that midnight launches and all that stuff's kind of gone. There's no, like now if you want to be Tim and wake up at five to make sure you have it on day one, sure. I never do. I wake up, I make, make a cup of coffee. I already did the pre-log because it hits you up now. Like, hey, 
pre-register, and then whenever you come, you click a button. Right. I click the button, and I get it two weeks after launch, yeah. three weeks after launch. Who cares? Like, I, yeah, like, I know. And, and that's my thing, too, is that that was sort of my rationale with this, where I'm like, I'll just get it fixed now, and then I don't have to worry about when I get it, because I know I'm going to keep that phone for three four years, so what, what do I care about being on the cycle? Yeah. And I thought, in my brain, I'm like, my birthday, January 13th, I'll get a new phone, and that's three, historically, iPhones come out, what, October? Like October, like November, December, January. It's four months afterward. That'll be fine for me. But ultimately, again, if you're if you're in the comments being like, hey, Nick, here's five reasons why you're wrong and why you should have just gotten a new phone, stop yourself. I know. I fucked this up royally. I looked at my wife and she but was like. But here's the thing is like you, you, you fucked up royally. You didn't. Things happened. Like I, because I am the guy, like I walk in like, oh yeah, I fucked up my phone. Can I get a new phone? Sure. Okay. We're in it. And I'm like, yeah, I know how to reload. Thanks. Yeah. I walk out with the new phone and I load it up or whatever. You yeah. didn't, you didn't mess anything up, Nick. Yeah. It's, it, you, you need to be mad like at Apple. It. Why? Because why go. haven't Here they had go. fucking USB C? What is wrong with you as a company that you don't have USB C in this generation or maybe even not no, even the next to. one? Fine. Huh? They're going to now. It's fine. Uh, guaranteed. Well, yeah, they lost that thing. The Euro Europe's like you have to. Europe, you have they to have make to iPhones. All of Europe, you have so. to use USB C. Yeah, That's we, why they're. We gonna... don't know when that kicks in, though. One hundred percent. Yeah, I, I, when Nick was like, "Oh, it's this year," I'm like, yeah. "I don't know." I mean, if it's not, like, I'm going to take this Apple phone. I'm just going to throw it through the LED. It's wall. It's, it's, it's just <laughs> wild to me that the iPad is USB C. My That's fucking the laptop's that, USB C. That's the thing that blows my mind. Like, yeah. The idea that both devices don't use the same fucking cable. Yeah, it's annoying as hell. See, it's wild. Yeah. I can't, so that's why, like, I didn't know at all about Apple not having USB C because I bought an iPad at the start of the pandemic in 2020 that has USB C. <laughs> and so when you were like, hopefully the next one does, I was like, wait, what do you mean, hopefully? They're strong lightning. <laughs> it's wild. I mean, they make a ton of money off that. Yeah, I mean, of course the guys, they do. They, make, they probably make more money off selling their cables than they do their phones. Like that's just how it works. They probably make all their money on. I mean, and this is me. I mean, they'll still make. I wish their, was here because they were like, Nick, you shut the fuck up. They'll still make the thirty-five dollar Apple USB C cable, and people are going to buy it anyway. Of course, shit? yeah. But they also, you know, they make the money off that. They make the money off this fucking. They make the money off of iCloud. I'm yeah. charging me three dollars a month for and to get. I have three dollars a month for two hundred gigabytes of space no, for the eighteen 10. gigabytes that I got on my fucking phone right now. Right? I'm like, oh, what the hell's going on, guys? Like, yeah, exactly. Ten up. So I got a whole hundred. The one shining light in this is I was like, really, I was on. The cusp of, do I get the 256 gigabyte one or do I get the half terabyte one? Yeah. And now I'm like, I can get the 32 gigabyte one. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> no, it should matter. I don't have to worry too much about that. Um, but like I said, again, my saving grace is that I have a fucking amazing wife who's smart and was like, give me your phone and just and airdrops all the pictures of my phone and hers. But she did. She was like, I'm kicking myself too because there was at one point she was like, I kind of like that your phone has different pictures of the same events. Than yeah, mine yeah, yeah, yeah. Your and I was like, well. <laughs> Never Not again. Off there. We're all having the same things across yeah. the board, but yeah. yeah, I'll get over it eventually, as I, as you will. But it, it's weird. It, it's just it's so. This is the one thing that you think that you know you can fix it, you can back it up, you can do all these things. You just think you're always going to have those memories there. You're going to be indestructible. One one slip of not checking. I should have looked. Is it right? All I had to be like, are you? Can you check real quick? But the goddamn Stonestown, uh, and they were nice people there. But the fucking Apple Store was a madhouse. It always is. There was like thirty people, and then they go, "Go wait against the wall for your phone." I was like, "I got to face fucking the fucking idiot. wall. Like I did something wrong." And <laughs> put, on, put on the dunce cap. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. You don't know how to use a phone. <laughs> it was. It's not the experience that I had, had come to expect from Apple, and I just feel like I'm like I just feel like this whole thing is. I feel like cattle getting in and out of that, and I just fucked this thing up royally. So I'm, I'm going to kick myself for a while for this one. That's for sure. But you still have blue text bubbles. So that's dope. I mean, at the end of the day, I still got. I'm still an Apple boy through and through. My so, man, bang. my man over that exactly. side. Green lightsabers are cool, man. Yeah, I mean, I use that. Green yeah, they are. Green text bubbles ain't all right. Yeah. Green, green text bubbles are totally fine. Totally fine. Look, you know. ugh, poor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want this. Shit. Phone's more expensive. But I, see lot, about? <laughs> I see people in the chat saying switch to an Android too, guys. I still would have to learn how to back up my phone properly. <laughs> that's that's the takeaway. The, is make sure your shit's backed up properly. You know what I mean? I do really like. Google uh, Photo, which is does it just back up to Drive? Yeah, it yeah. just backs it all up to Drive, well, and it's like like Paula has iCloud, and it's always getting out of space. But she also I downloaded the Google Photo app on her phone. Kevin, you connect it. What? That's the thing. I fucking knew to do that, yeah. and I was like, eh, I don't have to. I got a backup yeah. on iCloud yeah. that I pay. But I've had prompts when you when I, when the phone's logged in. It's like, hey, do you want to back up your photos from your phone to Google Drive? And I was like. What kind of tech bullshit nerd shit is and that? It, it, we had we had a similar thing happen with her phone God and damn. actually my phone too, where it's like, oh, lost the phone, but it's like everything is just backed up. 
Now, with her phone, every once in a while, she does have to go into Google Photo for it to, like, ping yeah. and uh, upload everything. But uh, it, that's literally just open the I did that week. I, I do the iCloud, too. It's, it does it at night. It lo- logs it all in and puts it in. I like that. I, for a while, it w- there was one Black Friday where... Amazon before they canceled it had Amazon photo or whatever and they were like I forget it was ridiculous mm. easy and I got that and I did it and I never ever used them for anything I just continued to use just my iPhone yeah this is it's it's weird man I, and, and again the, I'm going back to Apple tomorrow or maybe the next day I, have, I did it tomorrow but I think I have to do some stuff um, to get the answer for this I just I'm just so curious how it could be zero photos because even what? if I do remember there was a time where I was like the backup's not working. So I just like I just stopped giving a shit about it because I was like I have so many photos I don't care anymore. So that's on me. But before that, I've had three phones. So the first two backed up with photos. So how is there no photos on my iCloud? You know what I'm talking about? Could it be that you're logged into the wrong Apple account? That yeah. is the Are you one. Still Mike, Mike, and you have five different accounts. <laughs> so Kevin, that's uh-huh. that's very very possible, and that's what I'm gonna ask him tomorrow. Because but the weird thing is all my contacts are current. So I have contacts on my phone of comics that I added like two weeks ago. So I don't know if I have two. Maybe I have two Apple logins that I don't know about. And one of them's for the photos and one of them's for the thing. So I'm going to ask them tomorrow. And I'm sure, again, the people at Stone Sound were very, very nice. It was very busy. And I'm not throwing them shade at all. Um, They were nice. I'm sure they'll they'll help me sort this out. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I'll just get my wife to send me all the cute pictures of me that she took. uh, And that'll work. But, uh, But, Kev, that's a good call. And, yeah, I will ask them that tomorrow when I go in. Checking this out. What are you doing? I'm all backed up. Just making sure I'm all backed what's up. All go the, back, up uh, your, back up your memories, folks. Put them on a hard Kevin, drive. Kevin, are you? Who's buying a Mac soon? Uh, I am for Paula. She's oh, gonna nice. get a new laptop. Her laptop is 11 years old and is Whoa. having a lot of problems running 3D software. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, sense. fuck yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You gotta. You got to watch those batteries and those bad boys. Make sure it's not, it doesn't look like a pillow when you walk back in. We were editing something and. Uh, it's just crazy. She's got like Premiere open. I'm surprised they can do that at yeah, all. Yeah, it has the newest version of Premiere open, and it's like you just have to like wait. Like you, you can open a file, but it takes super long. And then if you want to scroll, it takes super long. She has the patience to do it, but I was like, let's just buy you a new Mac. You know, it's oh. lasted 11 years, and a new one will last you, I'm sure. Are you gonna get her a desktop or a laptop? No a laptop. Yeah. Dude, Kevin. And I mean, I know we've, yeah. we've, we joke around about Mac versus PC a lot. And obviously I'm both now. Thank God. I just bridged the gap. I'm like the guy that's like, oh, come into the middle of the aisle. Sure. Let me, let me take the two parties and, and, and shake hands. Mm-hmm. You know, let's get some stuff done, Andy. Of course. Let's yeah. get shit. I'm just interested in answers. Of course. Not politics. But yeah. then you're not getting the most on either platform. Doing yeah. stuff. Well, <laughs> but, but there's nothing. There's nothing like unwrapping a brand new MacBook Pro. Healing everything off. Healing it off. Oh, man. I love my NZXT machine. That was a unique experience as well. But the laptop, the MacBook Pro, the silver, ah, I'm, I'm so excited. For I that. owned a MacBook for like two weeks when I worked at Best Buy because I was, I was like the Apple certified guy yeah. when I worked in the, in the computer department because um, I was like Apple all day, like Mac or die. Why would I get a PC and... That slowly changed over time, but man, like I bought that laptop, I was like, "This is so cool! This little, div- this screen is gorgeous!" And man, I just love the OS. And then I was like, "Man, but that eight hundred dollars could go yeah. a lot more towards something <laughs> <Yeah>. else." <laughs> and I, I ended up yeah. trading it in, uh, or like just like returning it on the man. Uh, I can't imagine how annoyed all of my, all of the people at Best Buy were with me because I was returning shit all of the time. Oh my god. All of the time, and they'd be like, "Dude, come on, man! <laughs> like, we got, we're keep like this is a fourth thing you've returned this month, you know?" Isn't that like every Best Buy employee? Like all the people that I've known have that work there. That's abuse what they the did. system. Yeah, I mean, yeah, abuse, but that, that's kind of what it's for. Of like, now they're knowledgeable about these headphones because they tried them on for you know two weeks. Yeah, and didn't love them. I think about the economics of that. It's not specifically for Best Buy, but for like Nordstrom. Are you guys familiar with Nordstrom's return? They like return? take anything that's, from years. That's right? not the case anymore, though. Okay. But it's still very, Wait, what, very, what very was generous. the case? What was the case? Nordstrom would have taken shit back that, you, that you've had forever. You can find a tire on the street and return it there. No way. Like, literally, like, if you had, like, I bought these shoes at Nordstrom b- back in the day. If I could have taken these back 10 years later, and they'd be like, we'll give you a refund for that. Refund. Wow, I didn't know that. Now, it's not that good, but it is still, like, they don't have the 30-day policy. You could wait six months. And take the shit back and be like, give me my money back. And so, like, there's like this weird, never ending, like, it's like you're holding your clothes in escrow 
and you're like leasing them or renting them and then you just give them back to them they give you your money it's weird but you know Nordstrom also closed the Westfield Mall so we'll see how long they're gonna I had no idea that was a policy yeah that's why that's why like ordering everything's great but one of the reasons why I'm a diehard Nordstrom guy is because you can order it on Nordstrom you can get mostly most of the shit you want they sell so they sell Nikes they sell like you know clothes nicer anything if I if I have a chance to get it at the store on the storefront or at a Nordstrom I get it at Nordstrom because if it doesn't fit for whatever reason, I drive it to any Nordstrom or nearby and go, don't want it anymore. They go, cool, here's your money back. No questions asked. And you take it to any kiosk. I've returned, like, footwear at, like, the women's what? lingerie department. Because my wife's like, I got to go get some more, like, hanky-panky panties or whatever they are. I was like, hey, take these Reeboks back. And they're like, cool. No problem. Speaking of mall, Nick and I went to the Regal Theaters to go watch Regal Beagles Elemental. Now, Regal they're going Beagles. out of business, too, right? They're going, they're Shut like- up. Which one's the Regal? Uh, yeah, Regal closed like half or some something crazy like that of their movie theaters. Um, Stonestown is not one of them. Oh, oh good. I, okay. I, the Westfield Mall, they're closing the theater there, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. That's, uh, that's Century 9. That's Century, gotcha. not Regal. But Westfield and Oh, really? Are, Century 9's closing? Yeah. Closed, I believe. Already? Oh, yeah, yeah. it's gone. We just watched we Spider-Verse. We just saw Spider-Verse yeah, there, yeah. That was the last movie they ever showed. What the fuck? They're like, it'll never get better than this. Shut that, it down. That mall is not long for this world. The Westfield Mall is in dire straits right now. That is crazy. Okay, anyway, so Regal Theater, by the way. Like, I'm quickly becoming a, a super fan of Regal Theater. And it's mainly because the popcorn quality was so, so, so great. I'm okay. blown away by you saying that. Really loved it. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, I bought a little bag, Greg, and I was eating it. I was like, and Nick was like, what's up with that popcorn? And I was like, you fuck Nick, off. you can have some of my popcorn, but I'm telling you right now, you're going to want to go buy your own as well. Because I'm going to want to take some from you, too. Yeah. Because this is so good, and we're, oh, my God, it was delicious. Um, but, uh, kind of, we're going from malls, so we're segueing into movies, right? Did you see that Flash is doing a buy one, get one free sale? The Flash, the movie? Yeah. yeah it's not doing well, right? That is, I've never heard of that in a, like, I've never heard of a movie being, like, he, here's a deal we're, we're doing, you know? Maybe, like, through a T-Mobile, you know, discount or some shit. Yeah. I've never heard of a movie saying... Hey, if you buy one, you get one free. I I did not know they were doing that. I, is that because the movie? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well? It is struggling in the yeah. box office. Yeah, that's not a huge shocker. You know, I'm not in it, so. No, yeah. but Michael Keaton, he couldn't bring him in. No, I mean, it is a huge shocker. I would have assumed, I mean, granted, the, the, the film's been marred in controversy because of Ezra Miller, but yeah. I, I would have imagined that Keaton I, and the fact that it is a DCEU, like, proper movie would have still made it do well. I would have never assumed that it would have done worse than Black Adam. That's the big shock. That, yeah, that I'm with you on. That I'm with you on. I sure. could not believe that those numbers when those came out. Yeah, I, but it makes. I mean, look, the, the movies in general. I mean, there's a lot of superhero movie fatigue that's happening. But like the DC movies have been trending downward for a while now, right? Like Aquaman. Huh. Did Aquaman do well? That, I think. Yeah, I did a billion it. dollars. What was after that? But Shazam Two probably didn't. Shazam, Shazam Two did well. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Black Adam didn't. But do again, well. this didn't do. Well. I'm with you, and we're phasing them all out. Everyone's like, okay, we're. I'm with we're, you. We're I just, I was. Now. I'm in the same boat of. I thought Flash would have done better than Black Adam and Shazam because it was the Flash. It was a bunch of Batman, and it was well reviewed. And it had part. really yeah better good pre-release hype. Yeah, yeah. I I do. I mean, I feel some of it though is just is just I think people are like. It's gonna be on. We're waiting for Max. the reboot sort of thing, but or it's gonna be on Max and like it's a it's a combination Max. of all that. I think you know James Gunn was just on Rosenbaum's podcast oh. a couple of weeks ago talking about all manner of things, and one of the things he, he admitted is he's like, I don't think it's superhero fatigue. I think it's low stakes fatigue. It's people not. You go to these movies, you want them to mean something. They got to fight for something. He brought up the third acts. Yeah, so like you get to these third acts and like, and I'm totally paraphrasing everything here. Sure, because he was way more, you know. He's the head of a studio, so, but he was way more just like you get these third acts and like nothing matters. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like people want stories that matter. Yeah. And he was talking about his, you know, the stuff he makes. He's like, I hope I, I, I make stories that matter. I hope that's what I'm sh- trying to do. I have something to say, and a lot of these movies don't have something to say. Yeah. And you look at Shazam too, and you look at Black Adam, and you go, yeah, these had nothing to say. It just sucks that I feel like as messy as it did, I think Flash had something to say. But then, yeah, there's at the end of a long line of, you know, it's like Elaine in that Seinfeld episode where she loses that card that had all her shitty subs. And she was like, I was one away from getting a sub. And he's like, but you hate those subs. She's like, but it was going to be the free one. <laughs> I hate all these shitty subs. They get the free stuff. Yeah. I wanted the free yeah, stuff. That is yeah. so true. That's yeah. a great and Here we, a great We've eaten a lot of shit as DCEU fans. We sure have. All, us three. Yeah. Yeah. All, all, yeah, us hardcore DC fans. Yeah. Because yeah. I was, last week I was wanting to bring up this topic of 
just you know i love myself a good sports debate and there's sports. always like a there, there's always questions that pop up of would you take steph curry's career now at the age of 35 yeah. or would you take you, there's an option. There's an option. <laughs> yes, I don't think it's great. But you no, play one but no, year. I play one year Steph Curry more. No, 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 no. Not like, like, would you be that person? I'm saying like, would you build your team around Steph Curry right now okay. in the year 2023, or this up and coming superstar who may or may not be as good? It may not have all that potential or whatever. But they're 21 and they have a lot more career ahead of them, and they're 20 years old and they're at the start of it all. Like, there's always that debate, and I feel very similarly with the MCU and DCU or yeah, DCU now where it's like, does James Gunn have what it takes to take the DCU and become like the next big thing for a long, long, long time? Or do we, would you take the MCU's career from here on out where we've seen a couple of duds and a couple of movies and series that have kind of underwhelmed us, but they still had Shang Chi, and they still have a uh, couple. Uh, Black Marvel. Panther was great, and you know, well, Miss Marvel was fine, I guess. I thought you were saying people who had potential. My apologies. Oh sure, yeah, 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 yeah. The Marvels. Um, yeah, like wh whose career do you take from here on out? Where are you putting your fucking bets in? That's on? an interesting one. We should do that. We should wait for Timmy to get here. Should do that. And Tim's gonna be like, dude, 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 come on, bro. come on. <laughs> MCU we love him never so much lets hate me him so down. Much exact I don't know. Breath, yeah. I got, what's that? We love him so much and hate him so much in the same No, nah, we love it's him so much. We just, he's like our old brother, our big brother that we look up to. We just don't want to tell him that, so we pick on him instead. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm more... You want to answer the question? You're going to do it next I'm week? not going to answer the question, but I will say I'm more excited for what... for. I'm always more excited for the new thing, for the, the, for the new blood. And I think right now, I watch... I watched Fear of the Gods just to kind of get ready for um, for The Flash, just getting back in the DCEU. I've watched a lot of the animated episode, uh, shows that are on uh, HBO. I, I'm excited for uh, to start again and cautiously optimistic. I'm not as excited for the MCU stuff that's going forward. I was going to say, we are, of course, three-fourths yeah, no, of MCU in review. Mm -hmm. Have any of us watched Secret Invasion yet? I did. Yeah. Uh, I have not. Me neither. And yeah. I... But... but that's that's kind of misleading for me because I've never been really excited about the Disney Plus Marvel shows. Sure, Most but I mean, it's just one of those things that I think I, I understand that, but I think it's an interesting one of, since we will do it for MCU in review, yeah. but we're not doing the weekly recaps to keep the content fresh. Yeah. It's an interesting one of like, cool, there's not a gun to your head. Tim, when would you watch this leisurely, right? And it's like, well, you might you might never if it wasn't for work events. Tim, oh, no. Tim I is doing it not. with Eric Voss. Yeah. He's doing the weekly stuff, the but I think that also shows you where our priorities are and where we feel like hey this is must be on must react to content yeah. where if this was the first series that disney plus is debuting we are there for every episode just like we were right. for loki and wandavision and we have slowly just like what star wars did to me as well where mando's coming out and it's like holy shit this is going to be the biggest thing ever and i was very disappointed by mando and i felt like mando season two was a little bit better and then Book of Boba Fett kind of just didn't even give it a shot. Obi-Wan, the Kenobi show was fine. And then Andor was awesome all the way through. But I feel, I mean, yeah, I feel like there was, there's no more like immediate need to watch that more sweet show. And I had it like, it's a great, great thing that you pointed out because Tim brought it up to us and I was like, oh, he was like, yeah, just, you're not reacting to it weekly, but just make sure that you are all caught up on it by the way, by the time we get to in review. the in review for right. it. And then Blessing looks at the screen, the con like the because we usually show what's happening out here, out there. And Blessing looks and sees Eric Voss and Tim Gettys reacting to it. And Blessing goes, "Did this come out already?" Well, yep, yeah, came out last night. He's like, "Oh shit, I had no idea." But part of that is we are in an absolutely bonkers season for summer movies. I mean, we've got a lot and games, of content, and games, yeah. and it's I mean, the, it's the age old thing, man. Like we are, we have an embarrassment of riches left and right of we anything really, you want, whatever you're into. There's too much to consume. Yeah, I saw someone in the chat saying, like, see Nick not being excited for these shows anymore. I've never really super been excited for these shows because there's there's so many good things. To, like I look at them and I go, this is really cool content. Rather watch secondary. Suits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's because Suits is an escape for me. No, what I was going to say is I started watching the Bear season two, and if you contrast that, you take my recommendation. Yeah. Of course, anytime. 
<laughs> you know, you are my consigliere when it comes yeah, to great yeah, content. Yeah. Uh, but I'll let you know some games you should play. Um, <laughs> but I watched four, five episodes, six episodes, no, five episodes of, of The Bear Season 2. And two of those were two of the most unique, beautiful things I've seen in a very, very long time. Yeah. I get more excited about that than any of the MCU or Star Wars shows. Not because the, the, I don't see them as yeah, a premium or must-see, whatever. I just, to me, they're secondary pieces of content. Did you ever finish Andor? I did one episode. Oh, I was man. like, no. Oh, you man. have to watch Andor, My bro. Man. did the I, same thing. Everybody's talking this up. Oh, we started. like, no, I'm good. There's cares. other things to do. No, but it's like actually good. Like, yeah. please take it from me because I'm the same way with all the other Star Dude, they Wars blow shows. they planet at the end. I know. I saw Rogue One. I know what happened. No, but that's Remember, she's like, like, yeah. It's so good. I could so smell good. your from a Oh, my God. It's <laughs> well, so good. <laughs> Never forget. She was great, Andor, man. Bro. It's incredible. Um, I also started Dave last night. Oh. Finally. But season one? Yes. Oh, no, season three. Okay. Um, Austin seeing Men on Gage. Seen yeah. Men yeah, on yeah, Gage. Yeah, yeah. Like, just like, she's in. Well, what was she in? Dave. Uh, she's she, in season two. Yeah. Or no, she's in season three. Sorry. She's in season three. She's the, uh, like, the. Uh, she's working on that music video that they're working on. She's like, oh shit. She's a person always going back to oh my God. to Dave that's to like awesome. talk to him. Yes, that's a great episode. Yeah, I mean, that's a great episode. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm, I think I'm five episodes in, and she's every one of them is just entertaining. Even though it doesn't have to be the best piece of content in the world, I just enjoy what it. It kind of reminds me of when people say that they don't love like this Tarantino movie or that mm -hmm. Tarantino movie. It's like. Honestly, I could watch three hours of Tarantino characters having Tarantino dialogue because mm -hmm. I just enjoy that vibe, yeah. which was basically the movie where they're on the cabin, um, A Hateful Eight. Yeah. yeah. But like, I enjoy that. I agree, that though. Shit. I love that shit. And I love what Dave is doing, where it's like, as long as he is doing his thing, I am just enjoying what's happening on screen. Although, kind of makes me sad. Like I get really like existential while watching Dave, and it's it, very extensive. It's, show. It like fucking very bums me out in a lot of moments. <laughs> well, that it's funny that you mentioned Tarantino because you watch every every season of Dave is is like a Tarantino movie where it's like similar styles but totally different vibes. But, like season one, the coming up is like a little bit more heartfelt. Season two, I mean, this season is goes to places where you're like, whoa, you want to talk about existential? You want to talk about like. It, it it's very very crazy and very yeah it gets very heavy in a lot of moments. Do not for sure read anything about it before you get into the last couple episodes because it goes it gets fucking bonkers. But very excited for it. Show yeah. You got to prioritize. Tyler over there was like uh, Black Mirror new season is wild. By the way, have y'all watched it? I love Black Mirror. Jen and I adore Black Mirror. And so when the new one dropped, it was must see appointment viewing. Sat down to watch the first episode right, uh, and loved it. Thought it was great. And then it's been a you know juggling diablo uh, you know you have these free nights and these free times and what do you want to do and it's like there's that and now there's the bear and it's like secret invasion is so far down that list that i, I guarantee it's going to be that unless we hit a season an episode three uh secret invasion that's like holy shit i can't believe x they did that you need to go watch it yeah then i'll go it but if it's where it is or if like it's gonna be an mcu show it's gonna be fun it's gonna be nick fury doing shit it'll be probably the week before in review i'm like all right let's that. watch all six of them whatever uh, it's gonna be which i, I prefer I guess, to watch anyway like that i, I guess i mainly you know after watching episode one season of secret invasion i am really enjoying the tone it's going for even if i may not care a whole lot about what's happening plot wise I feel like my enjoyment from movies mainly stems on am I enjoying the vibe of it, which is, sure. I, I think I brought this up on one of the Fasted reviews where it's the reason why I walked out of Rise of Skywalker not hating it, because I knew I was going to get a movie with a terrible story and they were going to try to <laughs> plug in a bunch of holes and fix a bunch of it's shit Lando. from... But... He's in this big tank. But um, I loved just the silly dialogue they're having it felt like i was watching a fun mcu movie yeah. the i know the story's gonna be bad i'll you know sure i'll say that the story's bad but if i'm enjoying the vibes um you know it's i'm gonna have a decent time sure that's how i'm feeling with secret invasion right now see uh episode one very very like spy espionage thriller mm -hmm. like i always just love that thing it reminds me so much of watching mission impossible one of somebody walking away and they have information and they're walking down the street and then you see somebody kind of like walking behind him and it's like oh is that person chasing him brother and it's like cameras cutting between the two people walk like chasing each other but they can't just full-on run out i just love spy thrillers like oh, yeah. that and this but, is but that's happening this is that vibe 1000 percent. i like that i'm yeah. in for that I, i'm i'm i enjoyed season or i 
enjoyed episode one. Not the most amazing I've ever watched for sure, but I'm glad that I watched it. I don't See, regret watching. But it. that's exactly what I would have assumed it would be. And again, to Greg's point, if I didn't have to watch this work, I probably would skip this one. Honestly, I, and I love Nick Fury and I love Samuel L. Jackson. I love that character and that actor. One of my top characters in all of the MCU. But when you look at the sheer volume of things that are in line first, I'm like, I got to finish the bear. Strange New Worlds has a new season that's rolling out week to week that I got to watch. Maybe it's week to week. Maybe they're all together now at this point. I don't even know when it came out. I got so much shit to watch before that that I just don't want another candidly mid-tier Marvel offering that's just going to take up time for 30 minutes. This is going to go into conversation, I guess, tomorrow or tomorrow on the next podcast if we're going to do this one, which I think we should, of the career thing for mm-hmm. MCU, DCU. But it's just that fact of, like, I was thinking about this in the shower the other day of, like, man, they really should have stopped after Endgame. Really should have. Or and maybe reboot How the universe, that do whatever. Been. But it's, like, Endgame was such a once-in-a-lifetime moment of the build-up. And I mean, like, the IRL build-up to that, us doing in review, watching Infinity War, then all of the getting a year waiting for Endgame to get to Endgame, to have it, to hit, to cross... Like the way it felt like the entire world was a part of that and watched that and we were all into that and maybe just, you know, whatever as a nation, whatever you want to say. But like it's the- collectively everybody was there and it was such a fucking crescendo that there's just no way. I, and may, and they may, crushed it, man. <laughs> maybe not no way, but like this whole and I'm not even like, oh man, blah, blah, but like this whole phase and like it's like not it's just like fucking Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. and they fucking inhabited those roles and they were so great and, blah, blah, and it's like I'm excited for what comes next. I can't wait for Secret Wars. I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I love comic books and continuity, and, yet, and it's like, yeah, let's go. Let's fucking go. But it, we're just in such a weird place right now of, like, Quantumania, like, falling asleep during and being like, I don't want to rewind it. I don't yeah. I don't care. We They keep getting to these things. Like, oh, this is what's going to – oh, this didn't redefine anything. It's whatever. But yeah. it keeps building up to the next thing might be the next thing. In the And, it's and like, the future gets even murkier with a lot of you know, alleged abuse. And we got right, oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just keeps on compounding yeah. and makes you feel even less. Uh, I I never I, I certain. <laughs> it's always hard to talk about that because you never want to feel like you are lessening the experiences of these people that have been abused. Uh, that's always like. I always want to make sure that. Oh, that, you're not, oh, the, the really bad thing about this is the fact that the MCU might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. No, no, we're I never want to do that. We're not saying that because that's always like the ESPN thing of like, well, what's the future of the Cowboys? It's like, well, dude, that fucking guy beat his wife. Like, what the hell, you know? Yeah. Um. But, Nick, what have I told you episode one of Secret Invasion? Starts off with a sequence. Martin Freeman, Ameri- uh, awful American accent. Um, and there's American another actor that I don't know who it is, but also an awful American accent. And there was a tweet talking about the intro scene being like, man, these are two non-Americans trying to do an American accent. Struggling. And it is just, it is slipping <laughs> nonstop. Like, you hear, you hear the accent dropping dude, all I'm of in. the time. I'm fucking in. It is, it is incredible uh, to, to in. witness. I forgot Martin Freeman's in this, and I'm a huge fan of him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm going to watch these, and I'll probably enjoy them. It's just, you know, Greg, from your mouth to God's ears, what a wonderful moment. They would have been like, drop the mic, end game, done. And I can't tell if it is the fatigue of it, if I'm just getting older, or if that was there was so much emotion built up to that it's that I'm like emotion. I think I'm done. It, I, like I think I'm moving. I'm not done, but I've I've moved beyond that being so important in my life. I, I Does that yeah, make sense? W- yes, it makes because I think that's what we're living, and we are in a post end game world where now it is just content again. Whereas I felt like in the build up to end game, I'm probably being too grandiose. You were building up to something special, and we knew we were. Yeah. Whereas now we're on the other side of it, and we're just getting more stuff, which is good. I mean, I don't mind more stuff. Not gonna argue, but with it's it. not like. Midnight show. I gotta be there. We're staying yeah. like, and it's like, Dude. I know it's unfair to do any of that. I mean, Wand Division was a big like. We gotta, you know, people stayed up. You guys are crazy. Me and Jen would wake up and watch it during. You know, it was during COVID too, so it was like something nice to have a moment again. Yeah. But like, it is such a far cry from how I felt when I was talking to Tim about this. Like when the Disney, Marvel, uh, Star Wars acquisitions, all those acquisitions happened. I I could have sworn that I would have been happy with just more stuff in that universe. And that feeling is just nowhere in me anymore. Like, I'd be like, dude, fuck yeah. More Star Wars shows? Hell yeah, yeah dude. I'm super... And it's like, I'm not, I thought I was down. I am not down. Like, it's, I, it's an interesting comparison to... At Endgame, all this stuff's happening. Yes, I want it all. And I'm, I'm, not, and I'm not opposed that we have it all. Again, I don't know how you fix it. Yada, yada, yada. I think there's just been... 
missteps in the way they've treated the multiverse that could have been super exciting. They could have yeah. done stuff. But it is interesting now to hear James Gunn on Rosenbaum's podcast talk about like, yeah, the DCU is going to be selective. It's going to be specific movies. It's not going to be everything and this, that, the other. Yeah. And it's like, I think of it now, I'm just like, again, granted, I'm a 40-year-old man comparing myself to when I was a 15-year-old boy. But like, the idea that there is an ongoing Superman show that I just can't make time to watch. And there is about to be another one. Is there? That I, well, yeah. Yeah. Superman and Lois is it going. going. Oh, yeah. They just, oh, and, uh, and, like, they're, they just introduced Lex Luthor in the clips I see on TikTok. I'm like, fuck, this looks oh, awesome. I want to watch that. But again, it kind of middled. The, not middled. I shouldn't say that. I know people adore Superman and Lois. I love the performances. I love the thing. What I watched for the first five episodes or whatever season one, I was like, oh, what are we, can we just get to what the thing is? Or right. Like now this Lex storyline seems really cool, but it's like, even that, there was a Supergirl show, and there was the Arrow thing, and there was all the stuff, and it was just like, there was so much DC stuff, and now there's about to be the Jack Wade Superman cartoon that I do, I am going to prioritize watching, but even then, if it's like, it's like, the fact that there's all this DC shit happening, I'm just like, ah, I can't be bothered. You know what I mean? They sent me the Blu-rays, and I'm like, ah, pile them up over here. But I'll I mean, get to when I get to that it. makes sense, right? Like, like the like things used to be, and I hate to, I hate to sound like the old man in the room, but, you know, in the 80s, Star Wars was special. Because it was just the three movies. It was limited. Yeah. And if anything came out that was Star Wars related, people were super hyped for it because it was a special, because scarcity was a commodity back then. Somewhere along the lines, and I blame the streaming platforms, they decided we have to have a product coming out every six months, whether it be on streaming or a movie. And it just, it, it ruins the specialness of a lot of the stuff for two reasons. One, because, I mean, it is nice to have to wait. Anticipation builds excitement, right? And two, they just, Aside from the MCU uh, phase ones through fucking Endgame, it's just too much shit to keep track of. You can't possibly make uh, all of it good. I okay, yeah, that's the big thing. Bad. That's the big thing, right? I, I want to push like, back. Some of it can be good, but 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 the difference between something being incredible and being mediocre, the majority of the stuff is mediocre now. And yeah, that's not good. That's because not good like, for your brand, it makes it not special anymore. I'll take more of the stuff if it's going to be the. I'll take more and or if it's going to be that vibe and that seriousness with that tension and writing and dialogue like i want more of that level quality stuff mm -hmm. i don't necessarily just want more of a lot of things that i feel are not must watches and like when loki and wandavision came out and i loved absolutely loved the shows that's why i don't feel the same way about i wish they would have ended with endgame I wasn't feeling that way after Loki and WandaVision. Like, I feel like we feel like that now because we've had maybe Multiverse of Madness not live up to expectations. We've had Quantumania yeah, yeah. be a dud. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, Love and Thunder, which coming from Taika Waititi, this is the next movie he's working on. Holy shit, this movie's going to rock our shit. And it just didn't. And I still, oh, I still enjoyed a lot of it. I know I ranked it very, very high. Um, the goats got me. <laughs> but, like, I... I certainly feel that way now about, man, I wish they kind of would have ended right after Endgame. But after Loki and WandaVision, I was like, God damn, these dudes cannot miss. And I remember tweeting out, I remember you retweeted even, like, they, my, they life now, my life now is just waiting from Marvel show to Marvel show. Yeah. Because WandaVision, and I was like, God damn, dude, these guys cannot fucking miss. Like, these shows are, I'm sure the final episode is just Disney uh, or Channel Original Movies super fight in the air and it, sure. CG wasn't great but you like you forgave that because all the stuff before but god damn like I just think of the moment of of Wanda and, and Vision arguing as the credits are rolling and she's trying to end the show and he's like no you're gonna tell me what's happening like god damn these shows are so incredible and so creative and and then you know what if was a pretty big dud for me and Hawkeye was pretty mid as hell you yeah. know like See, it's so funny. Uh, it's so funny that I'm the only person that liked What If because What If to me was like but, the yeah. most creative and lowest stake of all the stuff that. They Here's did. the thing, but here I think and like I, that's that's the shit that I want. I didn't want any of these things to to try to build into the bigger MCU world and candidly not do a great job of it and have zero stakes. But here I see, but I think Andy's saying a lot of stuff that's right. Where it's like Wandavision hit, I love, I, I really dug. Loki hit, I really dug. What if was the start of like, oh, I enjoyed this, but it wasn't something I had. And I shouldn't say the start, but it was, oh, I didn't need to consume this. Hawkeye, I enjoyed Hawkeye, but I didn't, I, like, I don't think, like, I forgot about Hawkeye. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. right, Hawkeye. Yeah, that's something I watched that did something. And I feel like Secret Invasion is going to be that again. Yeah. I'm like, oh, right. Yeah. Okay. But even then, it's like, I, I do I enjoy Ben Mendelsohn Ben Mendelsohn <laughs> scroll enough that I'm like I really need sure. however many episodes of him this is gonna be probably the, not the you one know? thing I I really like Ms. Mar Ms. Marvel right but like 
there was a pro- bunch of problems there. You know, I I think the you know Ms. Marvel does you know leading into the Marvels or whatever. Yeah. Um, and one thing I appreciate appreciate about Secret Invasion is them kind of mentioning the upcoming. Just in this one episode, they mentioned like the upcoming war, right? The upcoming the secret war. invasion or whatever, okay. which I think is going to lead to a movie, right? Secret Wars is leading yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. And it's the movie Secret Wars. Yeah, yeah. Let's drink water. <coughs> Got like a Take it. scratchy thumb. And that's one reason why I loved WandaVision and Loki talking about this he who sh- shall remain and. Oh my, oh wait, so that's the guy that they're doing. Oh, this is the next big arc. The multiversal saga was like, and I feel like that's probably important. part of why I'm like, eh, it's just like, oh man, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness is gonna, oh, this is okay. They killed Scarlet Witch and spoilers, and then they like, gave him a third eye. And then Charlie's Theron show. I'm like, all right, I don't like that. Didn't feel like we really rocked the multiverse. All right, well, Spider Man, oh, Spider Man, you know, oh, okay, well, that did that. That's it. These big things, even Quantum Mania, like, oh, Kang's going to be there. Oh, well, it's, fuck, this all still feels pretty contained. You know what I mean? And it's like, if you're going to do a contained story, like I'd rather be sucked. a personal <laughs> story. I know, I know. But I'd rather be a personal thing. Right, yeah. right. We always talk about like, it doesn't always need to be the world is ending, it doesn't always need to be the stuff. Don't get me started on Eternals. We should save all this because we're getting to this next week then, it really sounds like, not. with Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, this has been the Kind of Funny Podcast. Each and every week, four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each, each coming to talk about things they want to talk about with their friends. I didn't even get to say, Kevin, are you still there? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, of course. Kevin, I think I like Indian food now. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> we what? didn't even get to cover this. We didn't even get to cover this. And like, Nick likes Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Oh my God, I'm so in. Wow. Why didn't Dude, anyone tell me these series were good? What the fuck good? was that? <laughs> <laughs> Dropped a suitcase in there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be part of the show, of course, go to kindoffunny.com slash KF podcast where you can write in <laughs> to be part of the show. You can say what's up. You can see what's hanging out. You can do all this stuff. Of course, you can support us by going to uh, patreon.com slash kindoffunny over on patreon.com slash kindoffunny. Of course, you can watch us record the show live just like Anthony is, Dropkick Tondo is, and Melissa are. Of course, you can also get a bevy of exclusive shows. You can only get there, like the new Greg way that just went up while we were live. Of course, Kind of Feudy, the Next Gen Podcast, and so much more, all on patreon.com slash kindoffunny. Remember, of course, that's what keeps the lights and mics on. There is a brand new month coming around the corner, which means all the old content you can get now at the $10 level over on patreon.com slash kindoffunny in July. So that'd be pretty dope. And you could go there and get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes, I guess, 270 episodes probably of exclusive content. I digress. Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Check it out. It means a lot to us. If you got no books tossed away though, no big deal. YouTube.com slash kind of funny and podcast services around the globe each and every week for a brand spanking new episode. No matter where you get the show, please consider like, subscribing, sharing, rating, leaving a review. It all really goes a long way to helping us find new kind of funny best friends. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I think Tim's going to be back next time. It's been our pleasure to serve you.